and welcome back to the Section 10 Podcast, episode 457, presented by Underdog Fantasy. It is the home of your two and two third place Boston Red Sox. My name is Jared Carabas, and I am a certified G and a bona fide stud, and you can't teach that. And this right here, this is Coley Mick, and he's seven foot tall, and you can't teach that. And this right here, this is Tyler Milliken, and he killed his dog Bullet, and you can't teach that. Bada boom, realest guys in the room, Steve, how you do it? What up, what up, section 10 in the building? In the mother fucking building. Presented by Blue Moon. Suck one. You gotta suck one. You gotta suck one. We were sucking blue moons on opening day. Yep, that's right. We were sucking blue moons on opening day um, because we had a live stream for 10 hours with the Dong Dong. It was an electric factory, triples for nipples. If you missed it, we have a compilation video. It's about six minutes on the YouTube channel. Go ahead and check that out. The link is pinned to my Twitter profile right now. Uh, we streamed for 10 hours, the entire slate, but it took on a whole new life once the Red Sox came on. And uh, I know that if you listen to old Section 10, if you listen to Name Redacted, we're going to like find our way here because... It's it's a new chapter. It's a new era in the format of how we're going to do the show now that it's the, the season. But we're going to be bringing to you all new content. We're going to have uh, a bunch of YouTube content away from the podcast. So if you like the podcast, um, if you watch on YouTube, there's going to be like vlog style stuff. There's going to be like almost like a I don't it's not just a vlog like we're going to kind of do. Uh, like, I don't want to call it like a show. It's not necessarily like it, we might do like, so, so let's just say, for example, right. Say that there's like a gong company out there that wants to have us come out and see how the gong is made. And maybe we make a custom section 10 gong or something like that. Like we'll do like away from the office content as well. We'll do at Fenway content. We'll have interviews. And once we start doing more of these streams, we do more uh, away from the studio content. We'll have behind the scenes stuff as well. So check out the YouTube page. But the birth of the notebook. I have it right here. Uh, I, I tweeted. I was like, this is either going to be something that I'm going to look back on fondly someday, or this is going to be a diary into my journey, uh, my journey of insanity. Uh, lo- lots to hit on. Lots to hit. On. I wanted to make sure that it was because I, I didn't want to miss anything once we go over these games one by one which what was your format steve when you did uh the uh itm uh it was top things from the series wasn't necessarily okay. game by we're gonna game, go game by I'm, game yeah i'm open to anything there you go because I, I especially with a four game series which the red sox split so this series review is brought to you by benny's <laughs> banana splits you know him, you love him. What's the slogan, Coley? Fucking choke one down your throat hole. <laughs> <laughs> Choking so hard. Only Anytime, at yeah, Benny's. Only, only at Benny's. Mm-hmm. And you actually, yeah, right. Gag they on. said we have to point when you say that, right. Only at Benny's. Fucking gag on it. It is, uh, Benny's Banana Splits is the uh, presenting sponsor for any Uh, series split if there's a two game series if there's a four game series the Red Sox happen to split it is brought to you by Benny's uh, (laughs) splits Mm -hmm. again fucking weird sponsorship he said listen I don't want sweeps I don't want series (laughs) losses give me the fucking splits dude (laughs) well I I mean would it make sense if if Benny's sponsored sweeps no for sure but it's also like it was them and there was a bowling alley, you know, the mm-hmm. one up on Route One there. Uh, mm-hmm. They were Carl's. They, they were Carl's. bidding against each Carl's. other <laughs> yeah. for for the split segment. So I, mm-hmm. I've never seen anything quite like it. Yeah, yeah. I, I hey, listen, we love competition in the sponsor space. Um, you know, anytime that a sponsor wants to come on board with Section Ten, you know that we're uh, 
Uh, always welcome to having that. Eddie's goat milk, Ronald's napkins, um, Billy's gummy bears, Clock's and uh, big shout out to um, Benny's banana splits for for joining the family. Sock signatures is now, you know, that's like it's, you know, it's the pantheon of Section Ten sponsors. So I'm very excited for that. Anyways, <clears throat> uh, let's let's begin. Let's begin. First of all, first and foremost, Tyler forgot his wallet at my house. And there's no need to bring this up. Well, I, I wanted to bring it up because like people think that you're like uh, you're like a, a character that ha- like it's there's no way this person's real. So I see that Tyler left his pants at my house because he, he, he ripped his pants and switched into sweatpants. And as you saw, nipples for triples also took his shirt off. He was half naked at my house on the stream. Uh, And I see his pants and I'm like, there's a wallet in here. We're now 24 hours removed from when he left the house and he's just cruising through life without a license, without credit cards. Uh, And the one thing in particular that I thought was the most alarming that I, I thought he couldn't live without 1999 gift cards in this man's wallet at what point do you think that you would have just noticed that you were missing all this stuff Tyler it could have been a week I, I'm not kidding I think wallets are outdated people today you don't need a wallet to get by you can get through now you may get pulled over and that's where complications come mm-hmm. especially I've been pulled you. over mm. yes I just yeah. pulled over without my wallet before and fortunately they let me go I just give them my social security number you know 242-389-6452 <laughs> Uh, and they usually take it and it's not a problem, mm-hmm. but I'm an Apple pay guy. I lose my wallet everywhere I go four times at Fenway park alone in my lifetime. I'm surprised that you've been to Fenway that many times to times. lose your wallet. <laughs> yeah. He's lost that it every time there. These were the high school days. One time I had 200 bucks in there cash. That's what taught me not to carry a bunch of cash around anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, but, it didn't um, teach you to remember your wallet. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I wasn't really hung up over the wallet. After really the second the time of losing your wallet, you weren't like, man, I really got to figure this out so this doesn't happen again. Well, I did take a step forward and I bought some tiles, right? That's yep. what you do today to keep track of your stuff. Uh-huh. Unfortunately, there was an awful incident on November 14th uh, this past fall mm-hmm. where I left Martha's at 4 a.m. I was coming home after, you know, a night of fun and I left my wallet on top of the car and it went off the highway. Like I was zooming on the highway. Last spot it was left was in the middle of the road and I never saw it again. And I went back. I was walking the side of the highway looking for it. Yeah, that thing's gone. No, it got smashed. Why well, don't like I, you're someone much like all of us who constantly has their phone in their hand. Why not get the wallet <laughs> attachment for the back of the phone? Bless you. Thank you. There's bless yes, you. Bless there you. Too. Thank you. Thank you. There's a limited card amount. And as Jared can see, I have a lot of gift cards that I tend to. But you're constantly the losing them anyways. Who gives a fuck? If you're anti wallet, too, then. Why do you get all the gift cards? That seems like something that a wallet guy <laughs> would like. <laughs> they haven't figured out another way around it. There's no digital you know, gift cards you can carry around, especially at the 99. It's only gift card form. And those are special ones. They mean something to me. That's fair. Clearly <clears> not, not Tyler. if you're just losing wallets all over the place. <laughs> I've kept this wallet probably for the second longest of any wallet I've ever kept. So <clears throat> before the show, Tyler, you asked me a question. Um, you asked me. If you were going to be suspended for slandering Bobby Dahlbeck, which is rule number one, you cannot do on this podcast. Why? Uh, I said, I will not suspend you because Bob did not have a stellar showing in this series. That's fine. Um, but for leaving your wallet at my house. Oh, come on. <clears throat> Are you? S- shut up. That is a, a on the season. That's number 11. We have someone keeping score now yeah, yeah. for the timeouts. Um, that is a suspension for Tyler for forgetting his wallet for a fifth time, five times. I mean, if you test positive for PEDs in major league baseball five times, like you're lucky to still have a job. So the fact that you're complaining about the suspension is, it says a lot about your character. Do you have anything to say for yourself? It was late at night. I was, I was clearly exhausted. I had been shirtless for hours at that point. Who knows? I might have hypothermia if the room wasn't 110 degrees. (laughs) I was in a tough place (laughs) and now I'm going to come see you tomorrow. Maybe I want to just come and say hello again. That's fine. I see you every week now. We're boys. Yeah. The fact that, um, the fact that I never see you at 98.5 The Sports Hub is, uh, it's kind of crazy. Well, you're only there on Wednesdays. 
<clears throat> I am I am there on Wednesdays. Yes. Moving forward. I'm there six to seven with Tony Maz on 98.5 The Sports Hub. Steve? I feel like we skipped over this, and I know we, we you know, really pumped it out during the stream, but mm -hmm. Tyler taking his shirt off that was, was big. so surprising. Mm -hmm. I've only known T-Dog for a little bit, you know, as, as co-hosts here, and I can't say that was expected at all, Tyler. What put you over the top? I know the stream, you know, the chat kind of pressured you a little bit. Was that what did it, or was there something specific? I'll be real. I'm feeling confident with my new body. I've dropped a lot of pounds. Thank you. Play that positivity. Right? I'm not all the way there yet, but I've been feeling better, and we needed something to get the Red Sox going, so I said, fuck it, and I stepped up. I pulled the tits out. A lot of people complimenting him, by the way. And now it's something I'm going to continue to work for. Next time we do a stream, who knows? I might have a six-pack. I might have packs. What do you call these things on top of your shoulders? Traps. traps. I might have big traps, baby. Um, traps and fries. I, uh, that would actually be very funny if... If by like the All Star break, we're doing live streams and T Dog just rips his shirt off and he has just like <laughs> these beautifully tanned six pack abs, he just goes in the bathroom with one of those spray bottles to make it look like he's perspirating. I would I'd love listen. that. It won't be the last time. Did you take your shirt off? Yeah, it just has to come at the right time. You don't do it for no reason. Yeah, no, slow. yeah. Yeah, I mean, nipples for triples was big. I think nipples was huge. Nipples for triples. Was trending in the United States on on uh, Thursday for opening day, so was Dong Gong, <clears throat> which was it was uh, it was great. But the first thing that I have here in my notes is uh, the birth of the Take Sox. I mean, the Red Sox were just taken. They were take take taken, and we were at the point where we were getting pissed if uh, the Red Sox were getting base hits. Like we were just like, man, that is that's some selfish act right there. Um, unless you're going to hit a home run, which Rafael Devers did, even that was kind of, that kind of pissed me off a little bit, but, um, the Red Sox have a new approach. It's, it's good to have an approach. Is it not like, is that not no. where we should land on this? It's like, we can clearly see, we don't, we don't swing and we don't throw fastballs anymore. Those are the, those are the two things that I, I those are the major takeaways. Uh, many would say like right now, this is the hardest era to ever hit a baseball, right? This is the greatest pitching has ever been. Stuff-wise, velocity-wise, whatever it may be. Movement. So why even take the chance of swinging? Feels stupid, does it not? Uh, Coley? I don't know. That's the greatest pitching's ever been. Right now? Stuff-wise? An entire dead ball era where it was impossible to hit. The polo <laughs> grounds was 1,200 feet to all fields. Yeah, that's true. Are we denying this is not the best stuff we've ever seen? I'd it's say it's pretty stuff. good. Yeah, it's, it's fine good stuff. stuff. I mean, the you're, late you're 90s, telling me Babe Ruth was hitting 100. No, oh, boy, it's like the go, late Babe 90s, early 2000s when Pedro Clemens, the rest of the fellas were all dominating. I don't know that we have stuff like that. We have more pitchers per game that all throw 100 for sure. <clears throat> I'm just saying Greg Weissert slider was not out there 10 years ago. No, it wasn't. Sorry. No, but I don't know that anyone has Barry Zito's curveball right now either. Fair take, but that gyro uh, slider, north-south movement from Garrett Whitlock. On uh, game four, today's game, in my notes, I have Weissert slider slash sweeper equals nut. <laughs> <laughs> Come. People are saying that. Yeah, that's so that's in uh, that's in the game four notes. So we'll get we'll get to that. <laughs> um, but yeah, first and foremost, I have to acknowledge the birth of the take socks. Uh, second thing up in, in the notes. Um, the new celebration that the Red Sox have. Yeah. Mm. Love it. It is amazing. You guys are it's not amazing. The I don't know if it's this. amazing. That might be easily the best one we've seen in recent years. Um, it's all right. No, it's so. Here's uh, here's here's where I land on this, right? I'm not going to name the team. I'm not going to name the year, uh, but there was it. No, it wasn't the Red Sox. I'll say that. There was a team, let's say, in the last five years that had like an on base celebration where like everyone was like, oh, like I love it. And all like the fans were doing everything. And it really was like a uh, it was something like behind the scenes that like obviously meant something else that they didn't want the public to know. Uh, I get it. It's like a funny thing with like the team and everything. But like like the Red Sox are like, yeah, like it's this. 
like it's a you're you're a monster, but we can't tell you exactly what it means. But it's something to do with like we're a monster. I'm like, okay, but like uh, maybe maybe we save that for a year that we're gonna be like really good. I don't know. I, I'm not trying to hate on it. I just I, I wish I I wish I had more context so that I, I could get behind it. Like yeah. uh, let me in on the secret, and then we can be like, oh, that's funny. You're like, oh, I think that Tyler. That's what makes it great is because you don't exactly know. It means something to them. Mm. A couple years ago, we were doing a friggin' check mark. You remember that? That was the move we were pulling out at second base. Like, at least this is a little fun. It's a monster. It's not that complicated. I don't know. Oh, dude. we're monsters. We're coming out big. It's it's Sully. It's Monsters, Inc. type stuff. When when Story hit his, like, seeing eye single and finally, like, got on base and he had to look to the dugout and was like, yeah, dude, I feel awesome. Like, that didn't look great then. Like, he he looked visibly upset he had to do anything other than just be like, fucking finally. Like, Half I'd the team doing it didn't even feel comfortable doing it. Like, it. Reese McGuire had no idea what he was doing. He was just putting hands up and down. Like, that, that's definitely not what it is, but... I'm not yeah, against it like they seem to be, but I great is way too strong of a descriptor mm -hmm. for it. I'm always yeah. confused from the why, last, like, why keep it a secret? Because it was the same thing either a year or two ago where they had a couple different ones and apparently Franchi came up with them, which was the yeah. most stunning part of all that. And then they finally said what it was. And I was like, that's what it was this whole time. If you're going to keep what it a secret, it? it better be good. Like, it better actually be like a good secret. So yeah. I can't remember like many of them in the past. Like, I know like they did like the wave. Like yeah. Mookie made Mookie them cool. Did some, well, he did some Brock uh, made Fortnite them cool. stuff, right? Mookie. Yeah, like they did like the Fortnite yeah. L and yeah. That's Xander. Yeah. Right, right, right. Xander did the L. He's like, listen, guys, I got <laughs> one letter that's gonna that's gonna change this whole season. Tyler. So the Franchi was the breaking. Like this. Yeah, break oh, yeah. It, it was like, when they yeah, like break. That. Like we suck. So like let's break up the bad vibes and then they finish in last. <laughs> let's break so, this like, team up. This team sucks. I yeah. like yeah, you you're like pre hating on it, Jared. You're like this team sucks. They're two and two, four games in. They don't should be three know and if one. They suck yet. Like they could be four or no. You know what I mean? Like mm. it was. It they was, should it, be. It should's tough when you get blanked in a game. I'll never say you should have won a, a game, but they only gave up zero. one run. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to. I'm not going to sit here and say that they should be four and zero. Oh, sure, right. But they should be four and zero. Oh. Right. Like, so, like the main point that we have to walk away from this series with is we spent the entire fucking offseason saying they need to sign Yamamoto. They need to sign Jordan Montgomery. They need to make additions in the rotation. And then the rotation of dudes that we pissed and moaned about was they were fucking awesome. But the counter to that is, all right, the Mariners offense isn't going to like lead the league in runs or OPS or slugging or whatever. Fair. But for what the expectations were for this rotation, to make it through without how like, you know, I guess we can call it a full turn, whatever, four games and, and have the results be what they were. And we're going to dive more into the numbers with T-Dog because I asked them to have those queued up like I I'm very pleased. Uh, but. I Cole, Talking about the numbers with T-Dog, I'm reading through his notes for the show. Mm -hmm. Game one, Cal Raleigh hit a two run blast in the bottom of the fourth. Sure fucking didn't. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> did I really write that? Sure fucking did. Supposed to say Mitch Hanniger. Oh, jeez. Let me see. I did do that. I'm sorry. Get do not I'm not getting suspended for this. Are you serious? What right if now? what if we read that and and <laughs> what if we read that, Tyler, and we we're just like Ron Burgundy'd it and then the entire integrity of this program goes down the tubes being like, Yeah, remember that bomb that Cal Raleigh hit? Oh wait, that's the script that I had from Tyler Milliken. Who, I mean, listen, that, that's the risk that you take by putting together the Millican Manifesto before the show. Listen, I, I respect and I appreciate the effort that you, you put into putting all these notes together uh, to, to have at our disposal for the program. But if they're wrong, is that a benefit or does that take away? It was a mistake. I'm human and I can step up and acknowledge okay, it's for, that. First say, show hey. of the year. First show of the year. First, first show, show of the year. year yeah. First game of the year. First inning of the year. Mistake. Mm. Gives so up you guys bomb. are supposed to be my backup. No one read through it. You read through I've, it once the show started. Cole, 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 did. Did. <laughs> right now you did. In the middle of the I've segment. I've been sitting Cole. on it. I brought it up when <laughs> he brought up. sitting on it. I, sure. I, why do you think? You think I just read that quickly to that right <laughs> after he triggered <laughs> you saying you had the stats ready to go? No, I've been sitting waiting for the natural time to bring it up in conversation. Some goddamn professional.
How long have you ever sat on anything? Anytime I say something that just upsets you or angers you, you have the disgust on your face. You can't hide it. I understand it. It just comes through. You saw me in the video we produced, my acting behind the door when it got open, mm. my shock, my dismay, my disgust, all of that was sitting there waiting, bottled up, telling me I don't know how to act. I just, I'm saying you have a hard time concealing emotion sometimes, specifically with me. With everybody, but at this to right now, I, I saw that and I double checked it because I... I'm a professional, like I said before, because maybe I forgot. It was a long stream, like we said. It was 700 degrees in Jared's uh, oh, house. so hot. <laughs> and so I was like, did I forget right a now. Cal Raleigh bomb? He typically hits them against the Red Sox. So perchance, I am wrong in this situation, and I have just fever dreamed my way out of a Cal Raleigh bomb. No, no, it just didn't happen at all. He has <laughs> no, hit no. zero on the season. Perchance, and I've never used that phrase before, but I'm going to start using it. As a Red Sox fan, we've all been traumatized by Cal Rally, have we not? The big dumper has made all of us sit here and feel pain. This is excuses. This is all excuses. Steve, all excuses. no one fucking asked you. <laughs> no, get him out of here. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. I'm speaking. Yeah, I'm speaking. Fair play. I don't know. Oh. You can call for a suspension during fair play. Get wow. out. Get whoa, whoa, whoa. It's whoa, like a whoa. hockey fight. One guy started swinging, the other guy was like, You guys try to tell me Tyler doesn't get overly defensive? You try to tell me he doesn't get overly defensive? He I, does. Listen, hey. I hey. think he's regularly defensive at the moment. Yeah, Thank he's you. this is he's definitely this is, defensive. Just a regular amount. In, in, in fairness, in, in fairness, T Dog's getting gang banged right now. He he's is. getting uh, it from <laughs> you're in every, every hole. He's every fighting, hole. He's fighting for his life right now. So True. yeah. Um but yeah, I just I just want to to get your guys' thoughts on the new celebration, which is what we were <laughs> That's what we were talking about. That's why uh, I didn't bring it up yet, T Dog. Wasn't yeah. wasn't part of the conversation. Once he said yep. we're throwing it to our statistician, never got a stat wrong before. I had to be like, <laughs> listen, before we get into the stats, let's double check the sheet, make sure there yeah. aren't any other fuck ups on the horizon. Yeah. Like imagine, imagine if the, like they had Alex Spear on Nesson and he was just like, Yep, so fucking Brock Holt, Red Sox all time home run leader, is joining us on the panel. Like, that would be a tough look for Nesson as well as Alex Spear. Ness! You'd applaud him. I'd what? If it was Brock Holt? If that was a stat he messed up? Yeah, I guess. Um, Jake, your thoughts on the celebration? Uh, I honestly hated it. I mean, <laughs> I feel like it does play a lot more if we're doing well during the season. It remains to be seen. But yeah, the whole inside joke thing that no one's really in on is, is kind of tough. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I just, I don't know. Like, I guess, tell us. Like, <sighs> I can't I, think that's it's, the thing, it's is that like, big I, a deal, right? Is it that cool a thing to keep inside? <laughs> what if they were like, Giolito didn't get hurt pitching. He was actually mauled by a bear. Yeah. <laughs> inside jokes are fun. This, this podcast lives off inside jokes. Yeah, but like people have the chance to explain, like, if you don't listen to the show, then you won't know the inside joke once it gets to Twitter. But like, we don't have the option to be in the Red Sox clubhouse. <laughs> like, we just don't have that option. So Pablo started giving a little bit of it today, right? They interviewed him during the pregame show. I don't know if you guys caught that. No, where he was like, you know, giving some of the details about them being a monster. But he said he, they're going to give more as the season goes along in the coming weeks. You'll get a little bit more. of it. Not good enough for this kind of rollout. And Pablo should have been working on throwing to first base in the air instead of giving mm -hmm. interviews. That's what mm -hmm. he should have been doing. Was an ugly scene. Mm -hmm. He thought he was Eduardo Nunez. Yeah. Um, I, what he thought. Uh, I have uh, a note here from the first game on opening day. Why is Joelli on this team? <laughs> I feel like that's a widely held opinion amongst Red Sox fans, and it only grew as the series went on. And it's not revisionist history because when we saw that Bernardino was starting the season in AAA, everyone complained about it then. And then we saw Joely Rodriguez uh, take the ball. And I feel like everyone was like, hey, remember that time that we said it should be Bernardino instead of Joely? And uh, we were all validated multiple times throughout the course of this series. Uh, I know like there are maybe like three or four Joely defenders that still remain on Twitter. But uh, those people are dumb. Those people are very dumb. Uh, <laughs> like he he looked fine i guess like he should have had like a strikeout to to get out of that inning today yeah. in the in the finale like that was strike three ended up walking 
the guy on the next two pitches. He threw a ball like the next two pitches. The next three. Yeah. So, but I mean, like the umpire fucked him. Umpiring in this series was horrendous. Dog shit. Horrendous. That is my lead note on the second game. Home plate umpire is fucking horrendous. <laughs> David Rackley. Terrible. Oh the my was God. Dotting the corners, all four of them. And this guy was giving him none of it. Squeeze. None of it. Like, I will I give like, him credit that he told Pavetta after a bad one that, no. like, no, 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 I'll give him that. Zero. No, I'll give him that. If no. you're going to call out, if you're going to go out I'm and say, hey, that. Nick, I'm sorry because you missed a low strike, a ball at the bottom of the zone, and then you ring up Tristan Casas Correct. on three pitches all no, at the bottom No, you don't get him a break on those. I'm just saying you deserve for for actually going to the pitcher and being like, no, I missed it. He had a bad game, obviously. No, but that's like saying if you don't change your actions. That's not obvious. Yeah, no, of course, of course. It's like saying, I'm sorry I hit you with my car, and then you hit the guy with this fucking car again. That's exactly Which is what you do, Tyler. Yeah, yes. <laughs> at times. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. Like, I mean, the Casas one was was inexcusable, and to do multiple the Munoz pitches, at bat, terrible. Yeah, he uh, struck out on six balls. <laughs> he should have like, got more upset. I was surprised. Um, he just walked back to the dugout. My Casas like, kind of like maybe something he's here. maybe he's like uh, oh, I, I, the guy's got a low zone, but it's like no, they were like fucking two three inches below the zone. Uh, let, we we'll get to that game. We're not we're not on the second game yet. You brought like, it up. I, I understand. I, well, I Guys, no, I said the, we'll get I said it. the umpiring in this series has been horrendous sure, is yeah. what I said. The whole True. series. Uh, it was mainly uh, the, the problem in the second game here. But we're going to spend the next 90 to 120 minutes <laughs> breaking down what in God's name Jaron Duran was doing. Uh, the situation was two outs in the ninth inning. It was a 2-2 count. Uh, runners at second and third. Two runners in scoring position. Two outs. 2-2 two, two count. Ninth inning. Casas out the dish. Jaron Duran. Inches away from home plate. <laughs> inches. If he, if he fucking... If he like <laughs> lost his balance and fell down, it's a run. <laughs> it, it was incomprehensible inconceivable and quite confusing to not just us watching but but our dear <laughs> our dear friend Tristan Casas was like what in the fuck are you doing dude like crazy crazy and like you can read his lips after and like they like <laughs> after Casas strikes out just looks at, Ka uh, at Duran like Fucking really? <laughs> like, you what kidding you, me? What are you, one of those uh, it, fucking stupid people or something? What are you doing, bud? What the yeah. fuck was that? It was wild. Like, I, 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 I don't recall uh, anyone being at Duran's locker after the game to be like, hey, can you run us by that? <laughs> <laughs> like, can you break down what was going on in your head at the time that, that you could have reached out and touched home plate, but just decided to distract our middle of the order bat <laughs> in a 2-2 count with two outs and two runners in scoring position. If you look at the video, Trevor Story is at second base. He is so far down the line. <laughs> they are almost looking at each other eye to eye. So go, go, just go. Like if Casas had actually made contact with that ball and Duran just He's died on just dead. over like three feet from home plate. What would have been the reaction? What would have anybody said? I do wonder if he was like too close to the plate that it threw him off. Like, am I? Are you just gonna let me score here? Yeah. Like, can I just like? He's, walk like, what, he's like, what's the catch? What's the <laughs> like, catch? I think it was too good to be true. It's like, really? All right. It's just like a reverse hidden ball trick. The catcher still has the ball. What's? <laughs> where's the ball? Do you have it? You're too far away to have the ball. There's no way the pitcher's still at. Like I, I had people after the game tweeting me like, "Well, what's he supposed to do? Cassis is gonna swing. Cassis can see him if a he righty were up. It. If a yeah. righty were up, yeah, for sure, a death was on the table. Mm. He could have, he could have ran like no slide, gotten back to the dugout. The pitcher would have wouldn't have even known. It would have just been a normal at bat from that point on. Like it was an insane series of events. He gets every time I go back to watch the replay, he's closer to home plate than I remember. <laughs> yeah. I am glad that it wasn't like the difference. If it was a tie game and he didn't sure. go, we'd all be losing our minds. The funny part, now that they got the W, they get the split, whatever, 
is that Tristan Casas treats every at bat like it's a game's worth of at bats. At each mm-hmm. AB to him probably matters almost too much or as close to too much as it can. <laughs> I love we were all in the same room for this too because he was looking at him like. I have the right to kill you. It's just about if I do or not. That's what we're looking at here. Yeah. yeah. Your life is in my hands big time right we're, now. We're all seeing it. Like, it's just one of those things where you can't believe that it's happening. Like, there's there, there will be moments over the course of a baseball season where you, the fan, know something or like you're smarter. Like, your thought is smarter than the thing that's happening in the game that you're watching. And it's almost like you can't believe it that it's like, no, no, you're you're the one that's getting paid to do this professionally. How do you not know? Uh, and that was certainly one of them. That was certainly we got it day one. Like, you know, those uh, when you go to the uh, like the 50 cent machines the and you get the the slimy hand where you mm. can like whip yeah. it. He could have reached home plate with one of those. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. does that count? Would that have counted if he? Yeah, I don't it know. With- we call the rules department. It's kind of late. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of late. It's it's after 9 p.m. on Easter. The, but I feel like if we do a podcast on a non-Christian holiday, we could call the rules department and be like, hey, like if you had in your back pocket, right? Well, put it this way. When you fucking steal a base and you put the oven mitt on to protect similar. your hand, that's an extension of your hand. Like mm. you're you're safe if you get your hand in with that thing. So if you're trying to steal home and you get as far as Jaron Duran did down the line. And you fucking slimy hand it to home mm. plate. Is that a stolen home? I don't know. I, think I feel each like it team should be. Should get one slimy hand. Like before the game, you say this. <laughs> yeah. this guy's gonna have the slimy hand, and yeah. you know, each side. Well, has you to still know. have to be holding it because if you're sure. if you use the oven mitt, it's still like it's on you. Mm. So if you're like you know ninety percent of the way down the line, like Jaron Duran was, then you slimy hand it, but you're still you can't let go of the the end of the slimy hand. Oh, oh of course. Does, does yeah. it need to stick? Yes. Like if it completely well, there's dirt. Off when it there's happens, dirt. Just, yeah, you just gotta just you just it. gotta slap it. Slap yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, a part of you yeah. has to like any base. A part of you has to like your momentum's still gonna take you. So if that comes off, but your body's on, you're good for the DSA. If someone yeah. slimy handed it and missed, and then slid <laughs> in, we're like, oh my god, he's still safe. This guy's incredible. He didn't even yeah. need the slimy. Right. My thought now. But you is also I, run the risk of you could get tagged. You, you could tag the slimy hand. You too. can big time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> big time. <laughs> what are there regulations to how big the oven mitt can be? I hadn't thought about this, but could you like they have the big hats now? Could you mm-hmm. just have a like a fucking foam finger? Why not? <laughs> sliding <glove? laughs> I don't think there's any regulations. I mean, wasn't that a thing in hockey where goalies started having ridiculous pads and they're like, all right, yeah. we got to we got to bring this down a little bit. Right. They regulated the the pads. Um, I mean, that's actually a, a another question that we should ask the, the rules department. Like, hey, put in the book. like is. Yeah, we'll put it down and make a note. If can you put a foam finger on your hand <laughs> and try and swipe second base with it? Why not? There has to be something in the rules where it's like your like finger protector has to be a certain regulation. But no one's tried it. No one's tried I, to yeah. imagine, the limits? imagine Ronald Cunha Jr. just like gets a base hit <laughs> and then the first base coach just gives him a big foam number one finger. He just puts it on like, oh, no one's going to notice this. If you actually <laughs> use the foam finger, that would be hilarious. Like Braves number one fan Acuna's diving into second base with that. Yeah. I mean, like, how, like until someone does it, they can't ban it. No one, to my knowledge, no one has done it. No. I feel like we'd remember that. Yeah, that would be a moment that I think it would come across our dashboard, whether or not it was uh, the Oakland A's or the Boston Red Sox. We, we would definitely see that. Um, Brian Bayo, five innings. I feel like everyone that has taken a turn in this rotation has been right around 84 pitches. First three were all 84. 84 and then the exact, 81 for Whitlock. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Bayo, five innings, 84 pitches, five hits, two runs, both earned. No walks. Only two strikeouts. Gave up a home run. Um, T Dog, what was your uh, impressions of Bayo and the the pit, pitch mix? Yeah, so this was the first time we saw the Andrew Bailey effect kind of come into play. We talked about it all last year. The four seamer from Brian Bayo, he was giving up homers on it, ended up giving up eight homers total on it last year. The same as his sinker, but he threw it 16% less. Last year against his four seamer, it was 310 batting average, 646 slugging percentage. What we saw on Thursday on opening day, it was 
just the three pitch mix of the sinker, changeup, and slider. This is what Andrew Bailey talked about. We're going to lean into what the pitcher's strengths are. We're not going to kind of force some of these things. And Bayo talked about it the following day. He goes, hey, I'm not completely throwing out the four-seamer, but you're probably not going to see it at least for a month, maybe two or three. I'm fine with that. When it comes to Brian Bayo, what makes him so special is putting the ball on the ground. When you have the third best ground ball rate in the American League, that's what I want to see out of Brian Bayo. I don't need to see you trying to pump that fastball because the truth is it's straight as fuck. It's not beating anyone and it's not surprising anyone. So let Andrew Bailey keep tweaking with it behind the scenes. If we see like everything else, we should be in good shape. And on top of the new three pitch mix that he's leaning on, the sinker was up over a mile per hour. The changeup was up two miles per hour. The slider was up three. So he's throwing that slider a lot harder now. We know he added the horizontal sweep with it. I liked it. I think the one thing I would say with Brian Bayo that I hope was going to be better while he didn't walk anyone, the command is still, huh? The strikeout numbers, like and, until he starts, like, I mean, I don't need a 10 plus strikeouts per nine from him, but like somewhere around eight would be nice. You know, like that's what he, separates him from Luis Castillo. Yeah. Just keep the ball on the ground. I care about that more than the, the K numbers. Obviously, K numbers are great, but some guys and we've seen it with multiple pitchers over the years, you start chasing strikeouts. Your pitch count gets higher. You get pulled from the game earlier. I'd much rather you go deeper, even with the bullpen looking like this. <clears throat> t Dog, you look at RPM and stuff more, way more than I do. Why is the changeup being faster good? Is that a, a higher indica- indicative of a higher spin rate? Yeah. So if you look it up, the RPMs, it wasn't anything dramatic. It was up 47. So that would, you know, someone who kind of yeah, looks no. at that would tell you it's not anything dramatic in that sense. That will fluctuate from start to start. I think it just might be a change in kind of direction and with velocity kind of ticking up. We know he's added weight. It's the body just getting bigger. Yeah. I think that's what you should see with Brian Bayo and kind of hope for. What I will say is, you know, control versus command. I know people kind of get weird with that. The control was fine, right? He doesn't walk anyone. The command is not great. And that's the difference with Brian Bayo. If he's going to be a top of the rotation starter, five innings isn't enough. It needs to be seven. It needs to be six. Well, it's 84 routine. pitches. Like, I feel like they're like, whereas like, you know, Seattle was letting Kirby go and like these guys are like 90 plus pitches. Uh, the Red Sox clearly have a plan in place here to um, let April like it's not even April yet. Like they're not trying to be like, all right, go out there and throw 100. Like when Chris Sale came back last year, it was like, hey, man. Go out there and throw 110, you know, like they didn't give a fuck. Like they, 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 the they, they, they didn't give a fuck about pitch count last year. Whereas, like, I understand that there will be the older baseball fans out there like back in my day, Nolan Ryan would throw 300 pitches and go out there and throw a complete game down there. But like, you know, I, I'm fine with not babying them, but easing them into the season because it, it's 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 not trial and error. It's more so we've been there and done that with some of these guys like Whitlock, like with how could we've not seen yet in the rotation? Um, Even they break that. down or they fatigue at the end. And I am more than fine, especially like I would take an efficient five innings and 84 pitches from Bayo in his first start and gradually work your way up to 100. than be like, hey, man, we just paid you all this money. You're the opening day starter. Go out there and pitch like a fucking ace. Like, no, like, do I think he's capable of being an ace? Absolutely. But I'm willing to give him, you know, the uh, time to work his way up to that during the season and have not like an extended spring training type treatment. But, you know, like, don't just fucking throw him up there and, and expect 100 pitches the first time. I think yeah, the expectation is going to be getting him to be a seven inning guy. Like, it does seem like that is the goal. I was just looking it up and he made uh, 17 six plus inning starts last year. That was like 62 percent of his starts. So. I would assume he's going to get to that point. But yeah, they are kind of babying him. I do like that he went to the clubhouse and didn't want to be taken out. Little stuff like that. I'm like, oh, this is all right. That's a good move. That's a good move. He's a dog. And he comes Mm -hmm. back. He's like, all right, fine. I guess you'll take me out. But um, yeah, it was an impressive start. And the fact what the two runs were just on the homer, right? That was that was that was it. So that's fine. And even, I think the only thing is just getting that pitch count. If it's not as many deep counts as he's going, and we saw that a little bit with Garrett Whitlock early today before he kind of settled in. That's what allows you to get to that seven inning mark frequently, which like Steve kind of just noted, Cora had no problem pushing him to that last year and made a point like you need to be that guy because the truth is everybody else here isn't that guy. Mm-hmm. Well, even Whitlock today, like you said, he started off not rocky, but he 
using more pitches earlier in the game. Last two innings, he settled in. And it was that third time through the rotation. I personally wouldn't have hated seeing him go out there one more inning just because that's been a question with him. But as we're talking about it, the whole rotation was handled the exact same way. If we're not going to be spending money in the offseason like they refuse to do all offseason, this is what we need to see, right? It's Bailey, it's Breslow. What's their plan with the pitching factory? Right now, it seems like everybody's locked in. Simpatico. Everyone's doing the exact same shit. I like that, personally. I think the one complaint I would have with pulling a guy at 84 pitches, or really when Cora pulled anyone, it was just the Cutter Crawford day. If you knew Kenley Jansen wasn't going to be available and you were kind of mapping this thing out there, should there have been more thought towards letting Cutter, who was really finding his groove late in that start because it was a little rocky for him early, could you have pushed him? Cora probably tells you, well, I don't think this game's going extra extra innings and, you know, we're going to manage a nine-inning game. Yeah. It shouldn't have. And that's what it comes to. In May, probably. But I'm fine with this plan. Like, they have a plan. Right. Like, it's good to know that they have a plan. And in that specific case, and, and we'll get to Cutter, obviously, uh, if it were May or June, he probably goes out there for the seventh. Right. And but like it's it, you know, if you're going to have this plan in place where you're trying to for guys that like no one has approached 200 innings. So it's like we, we need to do this right. Like if we're going to get there, then we have a plan. Andrew Bailey's like, listen, like, don't get all gung ho and be like, hey, man, you know, slap his ass and get back out there. Yeah. Like it's game. Three. That's the old school mentality. Yeah. <laughs> game three. Let's deviate from the plan. That makes it seem I, like right. There's no plan at all. I right. think there's something to be said about like getting getting that five innings in the last outing of the series. It's like, all right, we all reached the threshold. Let's not mess this up. Like there's something to be said about carrying that momentum into Oakland where you better be able to go five innings against those guys and the Angels as well. So I do like that they. We're all able to do it. And I, I just can't even believe that the starters have a one six four ERA. That's and everyone's gonna mention the Mariners. We already like alluded to that. I get it. But considering what happened last year, I looked up their first four starts last year, a twelve nine one ERA and the first four starts last year. So a, a pretty immediate change already. Tyler. Well, that's why just I just like, one walk. That's right. crazy. Yeah. That's wild. That's pounding the zone. That's Andrew Bailey. Right. Like you're talking about what Andrew Andrew Bailey's about. Keep it in the fucking zone. We want guys who throw their shit. That's four strikes. Boom. Less than Kirby. They all had less than Kirby combined. Kirby, I was told, doesn't walk anymore. <laughs> That's control guy in baseball. 19 yeah, walks last year. I mean, year. Kirby was filthy. <laughs> no, I know. Kirby, Kirby sucks. He was like, he was incredible. <laughs> it's like, when he walked the second guy, I literally was like, this guy sucks. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> See, you deserve to lose after that. Like, a dude does something he never does. You couldn't capitalize. That's on you. He had... So against the Red Sox in his career, he's walked them more than any other team in baseball. He's walked the Red Sox seven times. That's 1.4 walks per start against the Sox. He's 0.7 walks per start against everybody else. So, well, yeah. it's like you said, Sox are in their head. He, he sucks. Can't shake the take. Yeah. He sucks. Can't shake the take. You can't shake the take. No. Take it till you make it, baby. Um, Kenley Jansen pitched in this baseball game. I, I almost forgot about that. Listen, we'll get to that fucking. I was gonna say we'll get to Kenley. That that excuse making. I know. I, I, I've I have evolved my take a little bit on this. I was rage tweeting last night. <laughs> I mean, we'll get there. We'll get there. We've uh, Red Sox over. win this baseball game. We've skipped over. No, we, like, we te- No, it's called a big tease, Coley. It's called a big no, tease. No, 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 it's not because the Tyler O'Neill shit is <laughs> yeah, I was about far to- and away. <laughs> like, oh, I, did they oh, send his uh, bat and spikes to Cooperstown? Like that's um, unbelievable. Five straight opening days of the home run. That's insane. That is crazy. It's a, it's an anomaly. I don't. It's an anomaly. It's cool. I guess they had no audio on the call for that. They had, so. Yeah, some like the mics cut out or something like that. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Red Sox win six to four. I will say the whole Tyler O'Neill situation. I think Cora loves him. Just seeing every time they go to the dugout, they're sitting there talking. The defense, what we saw in left and right field, and the fact that. He's probably been your best hitter in the series, despite not starting every game. Probably not a lot of time left for Willie or Abreu because I don't love him in that fourth outfielder role. I'd prefer him to be a triple A if that's the case. Go get your everyday at bats and we'll figure it out from there. Um, game two. 
Uh, again, first first note I have: home plate umpire is fucking horrendous. <laughs> um, Nick Pavetta was the story of this one. Obviously, uh, the story going in: Rafael Devers was hurt. He was out of the lineup. Bob Bob stop ships over to third base, much like um, Cal Ripken Jr. He goes from shortstop to third base. It's my first thought was Ripken mm, and uh, Nick Pavetta in this game. He uh, he's just a different guy now. It's the it's the sweeper. The the screams are back, which we love to see. Six innings, 84 pitches, three hits, one run. It was earned. No walks, 10 strikeouts, which felt like it could have been more. Uh, the one run allowed, and it would be the only run scored in this game uh, from J.P. Crawford. Was um, That was it. That was the fucking game right there. We talked about Ger- George Kirby earlier. He was also uh, very, very good. Six and two thirds, 99 pitches, the two hits. Did not allow a run. Walked a couple. That was in the first inning. They kind of, I don't want to say they had him on the ropes, but like they had something going there uh, and he punched out eight. They, yeah, they let him off the hook. They let him off the hook in the first inning. Dude doesn't walk anybody. Walked 19 batters all year last year. Walked two in the first against the Red Sox. They had speed on the base pass. Duran was one of those guys that did walk. Uh, I, did he make it a third base? Yeah, with one out. Yeah. So on the like, wild pitch. Yeah, like you, you, it's not like you didn't have him on the ropes, but that makes all the difference here. And again, the home plate umpire was fucking horrendous in this one. Correct. Thank you. <laughs> that is very true. I feel like we've come such a long way with Nick Pavetta that regardless of what happens this season, I know there's a lot riding on it considering it's a contract year. I was just so wrong about Nicky Smooches when he had that clubhouse availability and was like, you know, I'm always going to be a starter. I'm going to stay a starter. And we that. all knew it's like, dude, that's not hap- like you're 100 percent going to the bullpen. What are you talking about to just get to this point has been so impressive. Like there's no if you had told us right now that we might feel the most comfortable with Nick Pavetta in the 2024 Red Sox rotation. Obviously, we would have laughed at that at a certain point last year. So Still I'm impressed good. he's even gotten this far. What uh, I don't get, I think part of this is, though, when you talk about where Nick Pavetta was at that time. He was a different pitcher. He's not who he is today. He went and learned a new pitch. So when you look at what Nick Pavetta was back then, it was a pitcher that didn't work. He had a crossroads in his path where he said, if I don't change this arsenal, no, I'm not a big league starter. I might not even be a big league reliever. And this was a guy in Pavetta who had a history of pouting, which happened in Philly. It was the whole reason he was here in the first place. Even if he doesn't like it for people to bring that up or talk about it, that's what happened, Nick Pavetta. Sorry if that bothers you. But you look in this. Oh, and for me to just crap on Dave Bush, Dave Bush didn't teach him that sweeper, by the way. Chris Martin did in Cleveland. Wasn't another thing Dave Bush got some credit for that he just didn't deserve. Nick, you fucking but, listening, pal? I know, oh, as if no, he's tuning true, in. Though. It's true. It was true, well, Nick. You clown. He fucking you listens because he blocked me. Uh, he fucking Canadian listens because he blocked me. Uh, <laughs> it upset him that people called him out on this shit, but you look at what the sweeper is. He threw it 33% of the time yesterday. Last year, his four-seamer was his primary, primary pitch at 50%. Bailey, hey. Your sweeper is your best pitch. The whirly bird slider, whatever you want to call it, lean all the way into it. That's your strength. Credit to him. He made the adjustment. That's Just, why we can look at Nick Pavetta and say he's a different guy. And he also started throwing his fastball harder again. We all remember it was like 92, 93, and Alex Cora was calling him out and saying he is not the same guy out there every five days. Go back and look at the quotes. He's like, he's just not consistent. He's matured and grown. I applaud that. That's where you should give love to Nick Pavetta. Expecting that, like no one would have expected that. I think I think I just like that's where I come back to it. It's like, oh, okay, he's learning a new pitch and like mixing up the arsenal and actually solving the problem. I look at Nick Pavetta as a guy that had no chance of doing that. It's like so the fact that we've like gotten to this point, it's should we talk extension? Like, is that is that the next thing? Considering they, you know, the lack of of depth in the rotation. Is that a crazy thing to do right now? Call it. The problem with Nick Pavetta last year, part of the reason he was moved to the bullpen Part of the reason he became a second inning starter, the first of his kind, was because the <laughs> third time through the top of the order is what gave him trouble. The first fucking pitch to the third <laughs> time through the first part of the order went in the seats. It was only one run. It was the only bad mistake pitch. I don't even know there was a bad pitch as much as a good swing. I get a really good player in J.P. Crawford. However, that was the issue. That issue hasn't been, I can't say it's been fixed yet. Literally the first pitch to the top of the order the third time through went into the seats. 
I I bought it. I I get it. He pitched really really well. Went toe to toe with one of the best pitchers in the AL. He was incredible. I would just like to see it a little bit more. I'd like to hit April before we start talking extension. I saw a lot of it on Twitter. I'm not just talking to you. I saw a lot of it that night. Let's calm down a little bit. Let's see it sustained. I believe in Bailey and Breslow and all that as well. Let's just see it sustained a little bit more than once against a lineup we've already shit on plenty. Yeah. Extension is almost, I mean, that's almost like, is that what we're supposed to talk about next? Because I don't know well, what didn't, the didn't right next Sam is. Kennedy do an interview where he talked about like, oh, we're work, like we we're potentially working on multiple extensions and Bayo's was already done and Casas has already talked publicly about his. So it kind of like left the question of like, well, who else is a candidate? Like, I would have to think that that Pavetta is on that short list. Do you know when he said that? Do we know? When did he say that? Uh, uh, it, was, it was after Bay. I was like, I don't know, like okay. three weeks ago. I didn't ago? know if that was like an assumption that it was going to get done before, that these were going to get done before the season, but yeah. No. He said it could be in the coming weeks after. The other name that has confirmed extension talks is Tanner Houck, which hmm. I'm going to put my hand up. I don't know why you're having those conversations, but no. whatever. Maybe he comes out this next day and he looks different. I think you can't trust much of his spring stats for what it is. They have like five more years of could... control with Tanner. Yeah, they get so much control. Sense. You don't need to figure out what them. he is. I think with Pavetta, where the conversation does get interesting is we've seen him dominate for a half. We've sure. seen that. Can you do it for 30 starts? 2022, there were campaigns to make this dude an all-star. For sure. And at the time, Rightfully they were so. good conversations. Like, he yeah, was like, balling didn't out. Didn't he, like, outduel uh, DeGrom in 21? I think he was in position to make the all-star team. And then he had, like, two or three awful starts yeah. <laughs> when it mattered It was, the like, most. right before. Yeah. Yeah, well, we've so. seen him pitch really, really well. And I like his competitiveness. Even what you were talking about before when he was like, I'm a starter, I'm not a bullpen guy. Like, yeah, it sounded more whiny, but to his credit, a lot of guys would just fold in that situation. We ask for athletes to be transparent all the time. And he was like, listen, man, I'm a, I'm a fucking starter. I Like, it's hard to knock that. I like how Tyler called him big pussy five minutes ago. It's hard to (laughs) say that about Nick Pavetta. Mm -hmm. I like his fire. The Nicky Smooches thing came out of him being fired up. He got a couple uh, strikeouts that were the third out. He was doing fucking sow cow, triple sow cows out there on the mound. He was screaming at second bit like he was loving it. That's infectious. I like everything about that start extension talk being like this is our race is where i draw the line like i, no, I would just like to see ace, it a little bit yeah. more you said if you feel most comfortable with them right now there's a chance in terms of going into starts who i feel most comfortable with pavet is in the discussion i mean it's him or bayo like that's i think it's bayo and a lot of that has to do with the fact you have a rotation that yeah doesn't have a lot of uh you know top of the end guys top i'm like guys, kind but. of like close to the spectrum where steve is where i was before he gave like right before the home run thank god i didn't tweet it uh, right before he gave up the home run to J.B. Crawford, I was going to say, like, there aren't many pitchers that I enjoy more to watch when they're on sure. than like Nick. Pivot. Like when he's on, yeah. it's fun to watch. Like mentally, I'm I'm an offensive baseball fan. Like I like to watch like I'm more plugged in when the Red Sox are up versus when I mean, maybe it's because like it's been a long time since Pedro and like Lester and those guys like we haven't had like a fucking and like sale in 17. Like it's just different, Back it. but not to put Nick, Nick Pavetta in the same class as those guys, no, no. but when he's on, there's just something about like, oh, like I get excited to when the Red Sox are not up to bat. Like I, I get to watch like Nick Pavetta do his thing and it's, it's fun. He's got so many different, I mean, a lot of these guys have like, they have deep arsenals. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I, you know, maybe we'll be able to do some player interviews this year. I know it's been a while, mostly because they've just been so pissy towards like the media. It's like they're like, they're mad that we say that they suck, but like they actually do. It's it would be totally different if like, <laughs> that's what I was talking about. It would about. be like, so if different if we were like, man, this team stinks. And then like, they prove everyone wrong, like in 21 and then they go to the ALCS, but it's like, we'll be like, man, this team stinks. And then they finish in last place. It's like, well, I'm not wrong. Like, I don't know why you're getting so defensive about like, so I don't know. I would like to be doing more player interviews just because I find that there are a lot of like uh, maybe the word fascinating is too strong, but like intriguing uh, subject matters that involve some of the like the the pitchers on this team, and especially now with with Andrew Bailey in the fold. Like I'm just I'm genuinely curious to hear them talk about their craft and the stuff that they've even guys that have been here for for a few years like Pavetta. He's not the same Pavetta that walked in here at the trade deadline fucking 2020. He's just a completely different dude. I'd have to think 
Nick Pavetta and other pitchers that are in similar situations in a contract year would be more open to talking extension now than they would have in the past, considering what starters just got on that free agent market. Oh yeah, like well, he's, I think a lot of guys want to just focus on the season and like, nope, the season started. Like we're not we're not talking anymore. But if he's going to keep doing this for the next couple of months, I mean, I, I don't even think it needs to take that long before no, you you try to lock him in. But it's also. Well, we've talked about who's going to be available next year. If he thinks he's as good as he says he is, yeah. which he may well be, he may turn around and be the best option available come. He October, could. November. Pavetta could be the best free agent starter. Like no that's, joke. That's it's a, it's a it has, it's not a knock on him. It's just not a very strong class, and the strongest arms are like forty five years old. Like he could be in well, line for Max like a, Freed, Walker Bueller, but even Bueller, but even Walker Bueller got, like is coming off Tommy John. Right. Is he going to pitch? Yeah. Like Pavetta, you I can think he say today in AAA. Okay. Yeah, you can say with Pavetta, no matter what, even if it's like a four ERA, that dude will go eat two hundred. Ah, like he's gonna listen, go make just thirty starts. Giolito, let's knock on some wood here. Uh, right, <laughs> but like that's the kind of category. If Giolito can get paid after having a four eight sure. ERA, and Pavetta, you're at four. Giolito got freaking twenty million, sure. or nineteen million over a couple years. Pavetta's gonna know. Well, damn, someone's gonna give me something. I would, I would, I would very much enjoy a Nick Pavetta extension. Yeah, I wouldn't hate it. I feel like that's not one of those dudes that's going to get paid and be like, "Oh, I'm, I'm all set. I can take my foot off the gas." Like, right. I don't think he's motivated by the money. I think he, I think he's like, a, <sighs> what's a good comparison? I feel like he's just, I, I can't, I can't think of a name, but he's just like, I think he wants to win here. I think he enjoys this market. Um, I think that he uh, appreciates the fact that the Red Sox stuck with them and gave him a chance where like the Phillies were like, ah, like we're, we can't figure him out. You, you see if you can figure him out. And the Red Sox basically did figure him out. It took a while, but they did. Um, so I think, I don't know. I, I don't think he's someone that wants to like leave for the highest bidder. I think he wants to stay here and prove that he can win here. I, agree, I was laughing, I thinking, want... thinking about him uh, pitching somewhere else, like yelling in Miami. It's like when you're saying he fits in this market, it's like, yeah, because the fans are going to be there. If he gets a strikeout and everyone can hear him scream all across yeah. the park, it's like, what well, is he got a doing? taste of it in 21. Like he was fucking lights out in that playoff run in 21. And, but every other year that he's been here, the Red Sox have been dog shit. So it's like you've got a, like a little taste of what it's like to win in Boston. And every other year, you've just gotten your teeth kicked in. Not personally, but like as a team. And Coley, I'm sorry for cutting you off. No, Tyler raised his hand, so I'm going to go off to Tyler now. All right. You're a gentleman. Well, but I think I look at kind of where Pavetta is right now, and I wonder, maybe not to the level of where Nate Evaldi, you know, got to today where he's a Cy Young contender, but someone who always had the stuff in the arsenal and was like, can he fucking string it together? And Evaldi had the injury problems. Right. Pavetta has been able to post and post. That's been the difference. But we look at how we saw Evaldi come here and he flourished in 2018 out of that bullpen role and kind of different roles that run. We saw Pavetta do the same. Is that the kind of arc, maybe not as high, but similar that you hope Nick Pavetta would go in? Pavetta is the leader of this staff from a veteran standpoint. Can you kind of carry that with you a little bit? And then you go into next year and the picture changes. You go from saying, well, damn, we really don't have anyone locked up for the foreseeable future. You could say I have Bayo. You know, Pavetta, whether it's a three or four year deal, Cutter for sure. And if one out of Whitlock or Health clicks, before you know it, that rotation gets pretty crowded for the foreseeable future at a cheap price. And, you know, that's not even including Giolito for next year. Yeah, I don't hate the Avaldi comparison. Uh, the Red Sox stinking the last two years may have helped Pavetta in a weird way because if they were competing, they wouldn't have tried so much shit with them. They wouldn't have done yeah. the second inning starter stuff, they would have just put him in the pen made him a long reliever and we would have seen him like once a week, maybe. So it, they would have Martin Perez them. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying it was great that the Red Sox have been dog shit the last two years, but for Pavetta specifically to get to the point he's at now may have been good, but to get to the rest of the game and just stop ball washing Pavetta, even though he deserves a, a good deal of it. I see here uh Red Sox offense stranded a big opportunity. Uh, and there's, that's really the only talk of the offense, which was non-existent when Devers, I don't know, shoulder fell off or whatever happened there. <laughs> there was one thing I saw 90% of the Red Sox fans I follow do that really pissed me the fuck off. And I'm sure plenty of people know where I'm going with this. Bobby Dahlbeck struck out in the top of the seventh with ducks on the pond. One of like the three chances in this game, they had to score any goddamn runs. Every single person was like, I hope Bobby Dahlbeck gets in a plane crash today. <laughs> Every person I follow wanted Bob's head on a pike. 
the next fucking inning, our $180 million shortstop comes up with a better opportunity, has the weakest fucking ground out I've ever seen. Nothing. Everyone's like, well, what are you going to do? All I'm asking, all I'm asking is for people to have higher standards for Trevor Story than they have for Bobby Dahlbeck. Feels fair. No? Is that not fair? Than, it feels fucking as fair. Who yeah, as someone who talked about Trevor Story spring training, I'm not panicking because no, it's four games. Casas also didn't do anything this series, right? And we know what he is. But yeah, if you're going to go and hold guys accountable for who disappointed on offense, Trevor Story should be near the top of the list. It was nice, you know, two little singles today or whatever. Cool. But this series, he looked a lot of swing and miss. He could have won them that Bats game. Were better than, yeah, he could have, right? That's the moment you hope Trevor Story steps up to. And if you're sitting there and you were worried coming into the year that the three hole was going to be a problem, especially after watching Justin Turner go deep again today, I think that's a concern we're going to be talking about at least for the next couple of weeks until Story proves it. Make him prove it in the six hole. Like, I don't, I get part of it is trying to get his confidence back up. That was for the end of last year, just coming off the injured list. Get your reps. He had a strong spring. I don't know why I start him off in the three hole. I, I don't get it. We're, especially with Devers out, I get it a little bit more because you're missing your best offensive player for sure. I It, it doesn't make any any goddamn sense. Wouldn't wait long to put Tyler O'Neill in there. Any, like if, if anyone. He, no, I'm just saying because yeah, you need strong. Just Lafayette. needing a righty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyone. Same. Anyone, but he's not. This is not like this is what sucks about this series because it's if it stacks on top of the next couple, it's like Trevor, come on, man. The leash is short, it's really short for him. And he was coming up in big spots, and I don't think any of us expected anything to happen. He's hitting 077. Well, I think he upped it today, like Tyler Definitely mentioned. Couple, yeah, did he what he had two singles, right? Is it just three singles yeah. so far? He's got three singles, and one of them, one was credit, an eight hustle, you know, but that was an out, <laughs> so <laughs> he's, he's basically got two hits. It, it took a call being overturned for the first hit. <laughs> yeah. 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 I do think Tyler O'Neill should be the name you look at because he's not the same hitter he was a couple of years ago where the strikeouts really rack up. He can work a walk. Like he can really kind of do that with the at bat and to offer you right handed power. Who else gives you right handed power in this lineup that's consistent? I wow. also don't care about lefty righty. I spare I me. put Cass's. Yeah. Coley's out on <laughs> put Cass's third. I don't know. I'm tired of Cass spending like fifth and shit. Like it, insa- it's, it drives me insane. Clean up. Red Sox lose one to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that loss, that loss really had me reaching for a blue moon. I'll tell you what, because even if you love beer, there are some moments you just want to enjoy them without the alcohol. Celebrate those times with Blue Moon's brand new non-alcoholic Belgian white Belgian style wheat brew. It's for when you want to drink your favorite beer without the alcohol. Jake, how many Blue Moons did you have uh, over the weekend when watching the Sox? Uh, probably 10 non-alcoholic and 10 regular. Okay. That's a healthy, that's a healthy balance right there, Jake. That is a healthy balance right there. 10 and 10. Pissing a lot. Yep. A lot of piss. Inspired by the beer you already loved and it's available year round. That's the best part. Belgian white, Belgian style wheat brew that tastes like drinking, even if it's not. Crafted with Valencia orange peel and coriander. It tastes balanced and refreshing. There's word balance again. Nothing compares to the great taste of a blue moon non-alcoholic Belgian white Belgian style wheat brew Blue Moon made brighter get Blue Moon non-alcoholic Belgian white Belgian style wheat brew delivered by visiting get.bluemoonbeer.com slash Jared for delivery options that is get.bluemoonbeer.com slash Jared Blue Moon made brighter celebrate responsibly Blue Moon Brewing Company Golden Colorado non-alcoholic malt beverage contains less than 0.5% alcohol per volume um the game that uh, I'm surprised that I still had enough paper for this, this game last night. Um, a lot of question marks. Well, I feel like a lot of the other games had declarative statements. This one, a lot of question marks. Just why? <laughs> why? <laughs> a lot of why. Uh, we just had a conversation about Trevor Story. Made a great play. Costas had the pick. Sedan Rafaela. Coley had a great tweet, um, made an outstanding catch in center field. Coley tweeted, I don't want to hear a peep out of Rafael's uh, bat this season. I don't want to hear a peep about Rafael's bat this season when the other eight assholes can't hit and also can't make <laughs> plays like that. It's true. Stand by it. 
Yeah. I I uh I'm very firm in the Rafaela camp. I think it was a great call to have him make the roster. I want him out there every day. It's also how I feel about Tyler O'Neill, more so after today's game. Um second time in three days. Why is Jolie on this team? <laughs> how was nobody else available? How? <laughs> Absolute fucking dumpster fire finish. Blew a 3-1 lead in the 10th inning. But before we get to that, Cutter Crawford was outstanding in this game. Uh, Red Sox starters were outstanding the whole series. But Cutter Crawford goes six innings, 84 pitches. There it is, 84 pitches once again. Three hits, one run. It was not earned. Walked one guy, the only walk of the entire series from Boston Red Sox starters and punched out seven. Uh, Tyler, do you have any... uh, do you have any info on on Cutter Crawford and his pitch mix? So it was really similar to Pavetta, where we saw a guy in Cutter Crawford last year who just fed the four seamer. Like we talk about that fastball all the time. There's the Garrett Cole stat um, about you know the similar inverted break and all these things. Last year he threw the fastball 39.1 percent of the time, the most of any pitch. This past day or this past start, the sweeper he threw it 37 percent of the time. So that's a guy who, as good as his fastball is, he believes his sweeper can now play up to that. And that was a pitch he was pretty inconsistent with a year ago. So once again, this is the movement of Andrew Bailey leaning into that kind of strength and game planning differently, which I think has been a big problem for the Red Sox in recent years where it was like, did you even have a plan going into these starts or were you just hoping to, you know, dominate guys just based on stuff on its own? It feels like these pitchers are better prepared going into these starts than they were a year ago. And I got to give credit to them. We got to talk about the the finish to this baseball game, which I was furious. (laughs) I was so mad. So mad. The Red Sox and and Kevin Euclid said on the broadcast, you know, uh, you have the ghost runner and extras. Red Sox make it two one. And he's like, you got to get two. You got to get two. Red Sox do. They're like, you know what? You you're right, dude. Here's another one. Three one. You're like, oh, this game's over with Pablo getting thrown out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, all right. Now we get a 3 1 lead going into the bottom of the 10th. Give me Kenley. Bring in the closer. Let's fucking lock this thing up. I look up. Who is it? Jolie Rodriguez is on the mound. Jolie Rodriguez, who shouldn't even be on the team. He's already been in the notes once. Is why is he even on the team? Now he's your closer. <laughs> now he's your closer. <laughs> It was, felt like the biggest troll move of all time. Uh, no, today, it was crazy. When, he, when he trotted him out there today was the biggest. I couldn't <laughs> yeah. believe it. Couldn't believe it. I, I saw him out there today and I was like, you got to be fucking kidding. <laughs> Surely like, this is someone like, else. No way. It's like the when, same fucking guy. Like when fucking Bear Claw was out there just getting his teeth kicked down his throat. <laughs> it was like Pedro in game that, seven. Like, what are we doing? What? Yeah, like that was Cora sending a message to the front office being like, this is what you're going to give me. This is what you're going to get with Bear Claw. With with Jolie today, I was like, this has got to be Cora being like, you want to give me one fucking lefty and he sucks? Well, he's pitching every day now. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's just how, that's how that came off. Um, but Kenley was not available because he, uh, he slept on his back, Wong. Yeah, I saw a back. Didn't feel good. He woke up and he said, oh, he. My back hurts so bad. I was a little sweepy last night and I went to bed and my little backy hurts. I need a little, little, little massage on my little backy. It's very sore. And now I can't pitch today even though I'm going to pay $16 million to be the closer at Boston Red Sox. But I can't pitch today because my back really hurts. It really hurts. Kelly, does it hurt? Does it hurt bad enough to the point where, uh, you know, you think you may have to go on the injured list? Like, is it that bad? No. No, I think I'm actually going to walk out to the bullpen tomorrow. I'll be okay tomorrow. You guys need work in the bullpen. Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to the bullpen tomorrow, but I can't pitch today. The number one dude that complained more than anybody about the state of the team and what the team was lacking and how you know they made and all this is you know it's kind of true, but it, it's that's for the fans and the media to say. I don't mm. want to hear that from the players, like. I don't want to hear from the closer, one of the highest paid players in the team. I don't want to hear that, like, oh, man, like, this fucking team stinks. Like, why am I even here right now? Tyler, I thought you tweeted the the Kenley video. Did you not? 
Yeah, of him walking out with the bullpen today? No, 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 no. Uh, him in the, uh, what he said in the clubhouse. No, I didn't tweet that. Okay. Oh, I I'll, hated I'll the post game. I tweeted out Cora's I, breakdown. I yeah. hated the, the oh, here sound it is, of his here voice. It is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It really pissed me off a lot. I mean, nothing I can do about it. You know, I tried to come to the ballpark and try to get ready, but it wouldn't allow me. So, you know, I got to be smart. And you know, I go out there and aggravate it, and then it could be worse for a week or two. So I'd rather lose one day or two. So I can be back. You found the same thing you had laid, laid in uh, spring training? Yeah, it's the same thing again that I have spring training. But um, we'll see how we go. I feel it's not as worse as the one in spring training, but still, I don't think it's smart to just go out there and pitch today, and then it will be down for two weeks. So I just take a day. So do you feel like you're going to have to manage as you go forward in the year? Or? I don't know, man. It's frustrated. I mean, what can I do? You know, you can you go to bed, you're waking up in the morning and have a bad back. And, you know, <laughs> you try to ramp it up and it's not allowing you to. So um, we'll see how it goes. So here's, here's where I'm at on bad back, Kenley. Uh, it happens. I remember actually it was the 22 season. I want to say, um, happened to Matt Barnes and cause like, I want to, like, you, you want to like sit there as a fan and be like, bro, it's the fucking third game of the season. You only pitched in one game. How is your fucking back sore? But it just happens. Sometimes you're working out your back locks up and then you, you can't pitch whatever. Uh, I think it's more like where I ultimately landed on after all my rage tweeting about it was it's the optics. I think if Kenley wasn't pissing and moaning about the team and making it seem like he didn't want to be here, then I don't think I would have been as upset as I ended up being about Kenley not being able to take the ball. Like it's like I get that, you know, one day you can have a bad back. The next day you can be fine. You can pitch. It's more so that you're the one that was complaining about the team not being good enough. And now because you couldn't take the ball today, uh, the Red Sox lost. Like there is a direct correlation to your body and you not being in physical shape to be able to, to, to do your job. That's the reason why the Red Sox lost a baseball game today. Uh, I'll also add, it's like you had to go back to 2022 with Matt Barnes. Like we talk about Clay Buckholds holding his daughter and falling asleep, right? That messed up his shoulder. But Kenley, this is like five or six times a year, man where he just wakes up one day and it's something's wrong, whether it's the knee that was barking, whether it's the back, it's dead arm, it's one of these different things. And for a guy you're paying $16 million to be your closer, why don't other closers? I watch Craig Kimbrell, who has just as many miles as anybody who posts. And listen, he's terrifying to watch. You're not posting all the time when you need to, Kenley. And like, that's why before the season, I would have moved him simply because he was unhappy, but because I have no faith in him making it to the trade deadline so you can get something for him either. Because this is where you're at with Kenley, and it feels like he's an inch away from a serious injury or spending three weeks on the IL, you know, like he did at the end of last year, where it's just a collection of different things. He got sick too, and it's like, all right, well, just shut him down. That seems like a sketchy spot to be in. And you weren't willing to eat any of the money in the first place with Kenley. So, yeah, of course, no one was going to take it because everyone knows what the problem is with Kenley. The guy's body barks more than a friggin' starving pup. All right. I think sometimes we jump the gun a little bit with like. What happened to Bullet? Exactly. Hey, he died. <laughs> sometimes we jump the gun and like, you know, make too much out of body language and like the tone of the voice and excuses stacking up. I don't think we make too much of it with Kenley. I really don't. I think this happens so often and it's so frequent with him. That post game, I hated that post game. Just just the way he was, he's like, what am I going to do, man? Like I slept wrong. Just felt like he woke, you know, woke up that morning and was just like, well, I guess I'm not going to pitch. Like it wasn't, I didn't get the intention or I didn't get the impression that he was really like, I'm going to give it everything I have to be out there tonight for my guys as we try to set the tone for this season. He should be in prove people wrong mode. Instead of like like boo hoo, it's I can't pitch mode. He's, and at this he's point, Eeyore. he's yeah, he's like reminding me. I, I feel like we've all had the coworker that kind of abuses the sick days, and that's what Kenley's doing. It's like, oh, nah, I can't really go today, so I'll I'll see you guys tomorrow. And um, yeah, I'm, I don't want to say I'm like sick of him because if he's actually performing at a high level, you need him. But 
I just hated the vibes, Tyler. The video you tweeted, his bo- body language walking out to the pen was like, he was miserable. I guess I'll go out here. I don't really want <laughs> to, but fine. And that's kind of the guy we've gotten. Jared, you alluded to you know, how many times he complains. That is what we should be doing. That's what us five should be right. doing right here. You can get a couple, but after that, put your damn head down and work and grind and try to make this team matter. And worst case, you'll get traded. Like it, you'll get, you'll go to the team that's competing that you so desperately want. Well, how and what's the root of these problems? On top of it, is it shape wise? Are you not in the shape you need to be in here? Is that what it is? Second because fattest family, closer in the game. I looked it up. You're wow. you're coming into this situation, and you had issues from the minute spring training started. You had issues last year. What have you done differently to be in a different spot this year? Because you're 36. You're not 40 years old. You're not out here barely hanging on. So what are you doing to go about it differently? 36. He's also, old. He's old. The, yeah, he is. Yeah, he's, he's old. Old. He's got some yeah, miles. He's got, he's got he's miles. He's mid-30s reliever. Chris Martin's a year older than I get him. it. Chris Martin has been tremendous, and I'm shocked. Like, he came in, he's just like, I'm going to throw fastballs right down the dick to Julio Rodriguez, and he's going to do nothing to him. Like, it's genuinely, Chris Martin has been an enigma. Can Lee have waking up with a bad back, not being able to pitch, to me, feels like the most baseball injury of all time. Guys constantly mm-hmm. leave games with like a hangnail. People are like, oh, that's classic baseball. Does Kenley sound like a big pussy in those comments? No doubt. How much of it, though, since everyone's mentioned it to this point, do you think this is the Red Sox? Like, hey, if you wake up and you cough weird, tell us because we don't want you to get actually hurt so we can't trade you. Do you think that plays anything at all here? Because that wouldn't shock me in the slightest. I don't think they're talking no. about trading them. That's crazy. No, I, today I, I, I'm yeah, saying yeah, at the deadline, to protect like you the said. asset. You're saying to protect the asset. Yes, I don't yes, know. the asset, not him for the team. I don't think they care. I think today we kind of saw what they would like, maybe as a potential closer moving forward. If that was the case, then you should have moved before the season. No if you were that worried about not getting what you wanted. I don't disagree. We all said that. We were all saying that all even before the show was back. We were like, yeah, just fucking trade him to open up the money. Like everyone was saying that. But also, like Devers, we could have this exact same conversation about him right now. He was as loud as Kenley when it comes to this team fucking stinks. He took two days off this weekend. With a but didn't shoulder. he want to be back in the lineup? Maybe. Didn't I see that somewhere that he wanted yeah. to be back in the lineup and they were like, no, you're taking another day. Whereas, whereas Kenley was just like, oh, safe situation in, in a big spot. Ah, no. Right, but if he, like, if he the told them that, Rappi's going out to play nine. I don't think he said at, in the in the 10th, like, oh, by the way, I, I slept bad last night. They knew that the whole game. They knew that heading into the game. Yeah. And I'm not mad yeah. at Devers. And like I said, fucking Kenley's, if Kenley didn't talk at all, I don't think this would be as bad. Obviously, they lost the game and that sucks. It would be much better to be sitting here three and one. Also, score more than one run over 18 fucking innings. Like, that's what I care about more. That's why they lost that game. It had really little to do with Kenley. Obviously, Jolie Rodriguez sucks. They scored one run over 18 innings. Like, that's worse to me. I never want to jump to the... Oh, good. Jared? No, go ahead. I never want to jump to the conclusion that a guy, like, doesn't want to be here. But when we keep stacking the stuff up with Kenley, it just feels like he doesn't want to be here. And not even saying that in, like, the... Like hot take. I'm just like, do you, do you really want to be here? Like, do, do you actually want to play no. on this team? I know it's a weird point to make, but he also declined to go to winter weekend, too. Like, that's like the first like team building thing of the year. And it sends the message of I don't want to be here if you're too good to go to that. Devers didn't go to the Trevor Story camp. Well, that's Devers sure. hates that's, it here. That's no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All I'm saying is if you. The, like, it's so easy to draw these parallels to other players. That's where it's like, are you reading too much into it? Probably. Like, likely. And I'm leaving that open. Like, you know, if, if Jansen now has like 10 straight saves, then. No, I mean, this is a guy who's, the- whose own blood has turned on him in the past. Like, I'm not talking like, ch- like children or relatives. Like, no, the blood inside his body has almost killed him before. We saw him in the World Series against us. Be not good. Like, I like this is who he is. I also would like to remind everybody of two years ago when the Red Sox would have a lead, they'd hold hand it to anyone in the bullpen. You knew they were losing that game. 
So that's where it's like, yeah, Kenley hasn't been great to start the year. If the rest of the team can score some fucking runs and prove that he should be excited about it, then I'll be on your side when he's like, ah, I, I didn't get a great night's sleep. I'm not pitching today. And one run in 18 innings. I get the Mariners staff is nasty. Their bullpen kind of fucking stinks. Wow. It's a tough combo. You were still in the position to win it, though. You yeah. got to the point where you had the No, no. The I'm saying it like, should have been one. Long one. It's not that way, and that's why you're giving him sixteen million to be that. Close, I can't. Right? The like, sixteen million point is going to make me explode when we're not holding <laughs> higher paid players to these same standards. No, of course. But when you're talking about Kenley Jansen, go out there and do your job, right? And I think no Rafael Devers, you're playing defense and you're playing offense. You're playing nine. Oh, I wasn't talking about Devers one. when I when I made that point. You oh, true, yeah, sorry. I, okay. I also we didn't don't even mention Bern, we didn't even bring performance up first post thing. Bernardino. I mean, that's that probably starts and ends. It's a Sox are three and one right now. If that's who's pitching, oh yeah, if not and four and oh, yeah, yeah, and that's why with Brennan Bernardino, I don't disagree because you had three options there in that inning, right? It was Chase Anderson, it was Justin Slayton, or it was Joely Rodriguez. The right move there, if you have a lefty who knows how to do his fucking job, is the lefty. That was the right pocket. That's where you go when you say, and I know people are gonna say, well, Joely Rodriguez, you you know, unfair. Luke Rayleigh hits the blooper. He got bailed out on a liner to Emmanuel Valdez. That ball was a friggin' rocket. Valdez was shocked he caught it himself. The other <laughs> ball was 84 miles per hour off the bat into right field. Like, in Joely Rodriguez, you missed 10K per nine the last two years. Miss a fucking bat. That's what you're supposed to be out there doing. You let four straight guys put the bat on the ball. Guess what? Bad shit's going to happen at times. Let's also not forget what happened with Willie Abreu and Wright. I don't know what that was. Bobbling that ball... Probably the easiest today. ball you're ever going to field. What's up? Oh, no. Yeah, okay. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, bobbles it to get second and third with one out. And extra innings, as we all know, it happens fast. Like 3-1, I think the Sox were like minus 600 to win the game when it was going to the bottom of the 10th. I definitely wasn't looking it up. And then all of a sudden, it just immediately is second and third with one out. They're down one. Oh, the game's over. They're going to lose. Like, it, that's mm. exactly what happened the second Abreu bobbles that ball. And it, yep. it gives you flashbacks to the last couple of years of these mistakes stacking on top of each other and everyone kind of looking around like, I don't want to be the next guy to mess it up. Yeah, that's where you were like, damn, I wish Tyler O'Neill was out there. Right. And we saw in that first yeah. game where he was kind of controlling the run game and that stuff. What I will say about their Brayu thing, who people want to put that more on him, that J.P. Crawford ball to Emmanuel Valdez is not going to be a friggin double play. You're playing back for double play depth. At the very least, the game's going to be tied. You're not turning to there because. It's just not going to happen. That ball, how slow it was hit, you'd be lucky to get that out at first base. Do we think he got a He's bad read or that was just a bad ball? His read didn't seem great, but did the ball just die? I don't know. It. I just feel like someone else at second base, they get the out at home. That's kind of... Yeah, maybe. May maybe they get there because the throw was across the body. It was on the other side of the catcher. I just mean on how hard the ball was hit. Oh, no People chance. People were like, well, if Abreu had got the ball and it was first and second... You're at least getting the lead runner, or maybe you're turning two. You're not turning two. The game's tied bare minimum. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> the craziest uh, thing Isaiah about... Isaiah Campbell looks good. Oh, yeah, Isaiah Go Campbell does look good. I was just going to say the craziest thing about Joelli, he's never really been good at baseball. No. Like, if you look at no. his career not He's got an 80 RA with the Red Sox. Yeah. But yeah, he's just, like, anywhere else. He was great with the Yankees in 21, but it was over 19 innings. Like, that doesn't say much to me everywhere else is his era pretty consistently starts with a four yeah he's like a five career era dad i don't get it why in seven why years do guys, <laughs> yeah. this isn't a why do you guys think he ended up on the roster do you think it was the front office I, or core? i think he saved someone's kid from drowning or something i don't i don't <laughs> know i have kids. no idea Definitely not i do not have an maybe. answer to that question no it can't be it can't be <laughs> well, especially, especially it's it'd be one thing if like he showed flashes of greatness last year and they were like well we see something here it's like no he sucked last year too and he had like five different injuries it was like Constantly a hip shoulder hurt. fucking yeah it was all kinds of shit that he was hurt with last year it wasn't just like one lingering injury um yeah i mean nice guy you know like that, he's always bopping around like in a great mood he seems he's cool whistling as hell. He's, that's what kills yeah. i hate it because he, he does cool. seem awesome he really yeah. he like it just when you suck Always this bad, upbeat. I'm like, stop goofing around. I don't know. Like the second you start being all this blah blah blah, I'm like, just be. I wish you were better because then that no attitude doubt. and the the funny stuff plays <laughs> a lot better if you don't have an eight yeah. ERA on the team, right? And you're just like directly costing the team games. 
And then the next day, he's like, blah da doo, blah da da. He's like juggling in the in the clubhouse. Like, he's what is he doing? Blah da doo, blah da da. That's what he's oh, okay. doing like, yeah, all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He just yeah. has to yeah. be yeah. like. Also, why did they fucking pitch to Julio with a uh, base Oh, why was no one talking about this? No one talked it's about a real that. Bad. It's a great point. We're talking about it. That's a great point, Jared. Yeah, thank you. For the thank force at every base, one out. What are we doing? Let's pitch the fucking best hitter on the team on a team that was 22nd in Major League Baseball and hitting last year. Uh, that doesn't seem like a like a wise choice. Red Sox did it, and it was fucking Slayton's debut. That poor. Fuck. It's like, hey, welcome to the show. Here's Julio Rodriguez in extra innings uh, with the fucking game winning run 90 feet away. Do you think they're punting at that point? Like, hey, no, no, there. they're banking on swings and misses. They're like, I don't, I don't think that like it's not like they love the matchup because how could they possibly know? Right. But you got to fucking put Julio Rodriguez on at that in that situation. But I think it's like, hey, we've already burned through most of our bullpen. Like we've talked about, we still have to play tomorrow and we're on the West Coast the rest of for another week. Do we care about game three? Or do we just play for the split tomorrow? We're already in extras. Are we going to trot Chase Anderson out there next inning? Like that, we know it's going to, how this is going to end regardless. I guess. I don't know. I mean, no, you I, had I, it though. Like that's what pisses no, me I get off. It, but like, at that point, you don't. Like, best case scenario, even if you get, if I you know. walk Julio, you get a double plate. It's, it's not like you win. But, but you, uh, in extras, you, you have that ghost runner. So it's like, all right, like we have at least. If we keep this thing tied, then we start the next inning with a guy on second. Like we might be able to get away with one here. Uh, sure, but you just had a two-run like cushion. Picker. You think a one-run cushion with Chase Anderson's oh, better? Oh, fucking Joely Rodriguez isn't coming in the game after that. Joely's point. probably better than Chase Anderson if we're really keeping it a buck right now. I guess. But I don't know. Maybe just try. I don't know if you're just accepting the loss there. I, I don't know. That's. Uh, I'm not saying like you're thrilled about it, but you were just up two to think you have again. You've scored one one run in 18 regulation innings before this. I don't think it's like a guarantee you're even getting this next guy home. I mean, they probably yeah, they probably don't get the ghost runner in the next half, right? And then just loot. That's probably what would have happened, but. It just, yeah, I, I no one was talking about the walk J Rod thing. It's like this is the most obvious move ever. It was crazy. I, I also didn't love the flipping Casas for Bobby Dalbeck at first. No, base. that felt. I would have yeah, understood. Yeah, that felt bad. That was overthinking it, overthinking it way too much. I, I think if Dalbeck was at second base, it's a conversation. You don't have Rafael Devers in your lineup. Arguably, nobody else in that lineup can give you anything. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Like Casas is the closest thing to actually cash in and score in extras. You're pulling him. You took away any chance. I thought at that point of you at least having multiple shots of putting runs on. The I board. agree. I agree with that take. It's a good take, Tyler. Yeah. It's good. That's good a good point, kid. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, yeah, Chase Anderson but... hasn't had an ERA under three nine since 2017. <laughs> Brewers years were nasty. Yeah, he was nasty with the crew. Listen, that was a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> He's Matt Andrees, but like worse. What a, what a selling point. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> they will never pitch him in Remember a competitive that guy game. Fucking suck. This guy's slightly worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out Matt Andrees, another guy who did fucking more than Dave Bush ever did because he taught Garrett Whitlock that change up. Mm. Shout out the piece. Big piece. Yeah. The longer the season Love goes peace. on, Dave Bush is going to be taking bullets. <laughs> Dave Bush, <laughs> Dave Dave Bush and two years ago, Nick Pavetta said something. Tyler won't let him forget it. No. No. <laughs> Where's Bush now? Night. Where's Big Bush? Texas. I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. Just an awful night. Bad night. Just an awful night. Bad night. I mean, you you lose a one nothing ball game the day before. You're trying to bounce back. You got a 3-1 lead. It's extra innings. It's the West Coast. And you have a closer. And then you got to look at Joely Rodriguez out there. It's just, it was so many kicks in the dick. Then you go on to lose a game. It's it's the night before Easter. I'm sitting there fucking pissed as hell, filling up Easter eggs with jelly beans, just like fucking Kenley, this motherfucker, just putting these, just putting these <laughs> sweet tart jelly beans inside these fucking eggs, and I'm just like, motherfucking, like, why can't we just? It was at, at two o'clock in the morning by that point. Red Sox lose two to one. Jared, all all jelly beans or any other candies? Uh 
it was like traditional jelly beans and the sweet tart jelly beans, which are delicious. Um, so I was doing like a combo of the traditional and the cold. Have you had the Starburst Fave Reds jelly beans? No, but those sound delicious. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We put we put some money in the uh, fucking. That was the other thing that fucking pissed me <laughs> off was. <laughs> We did fucking regular eggs with jelly beans, and then we had these gold uh, eggs that uh, we put the money in, and the gold eggs just fucking glitter all over the fucking place. I'm just like, can't, with the fucking glitter, I'm going to bed, and I just got, I wake up in the morning, and I look like fucking Lady Gaga with half my face is covered in glitter, and I don't understand why. Oh, the golden eggs. That's why. Glitter's the worst. Cole, Cole, why were the eggs on your face? Because I was putting the money in the eggs, so the glitter got on my hands, and then my I obviously touched my face after, so the glitter made its way to my face. Steve? How much money per egg? Uh, it varied between five, ten, and one dollar. That was a funny way to say that. Ver Tyler, <laughs> Tyler. Uh, what was the egg total? Uh, between 15 to 20 eggs, I would say. I thought he was going to say like 100. There was like one. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> and, yeah. And that one of them had a bomb in it that if you open it, it exploded. <laughs> yeah. Die. Yeah. <laughs> Just rat poison inside one of the eggs. <laughs> nice anthrax egg. Yeah. Yeah. Poisoned candy inside one of the one of the <laughs> eggs. You have to figure out which one it is. It's going to be a quieter house after this Easter. Mm hmm. Red Sox lose two to one. <laughs> Campbell is sick though. You brought him up and I cut you off. Campbell's been unbelievable. He's been a yes. What a he's stash. Been, he's got a great stash. Yep. Yep. Agree. Great stash. Tyler, you have some numbers on Campbell? No, I would actually just throw Greg Weiser in that conversation we'll as well. Fucking get there! Coley? He's gotta have numbers on Campbell there. I mean, that was unbelievable. You got me. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Crazy. And, yeah. What? Yeah. What? Campbell's. Campbell it <laughs> Oh, oh you got to be fucking me. It's two innings with one run. You oh, now he's... <laughs> I mean, come on. So he like oh, here's the... so he did have I always <laughs> love when he I love when he keeps talking when he's when he's just yeah. Yeah. That makes it so much more dude. It. He had the numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All you have for yeah. was the numbers. He wanted to go right. off screen. the numbers. He wanted to freestyle. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. This is my first yeah. impression of Tyler with the numbers. I think he's great with the numbers. So great it's like, numbers. dude, this is your them. moment. Doesn't know how to use yeah. the numbers. Doesn't, has have, the doesn't numbers, have them. But he does. Doesn't have them. Doesn't have these ones. And suck on it. Jake, when he's suspended, can he hear us or no? Oh, yeah. You can hear everything we're saying. All right. Perfect. Perfect. What are you talking about me like I'm not here? Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask Jake that question. That was a question for Jake. You want the Isaiah Campbell numbers? That's what we asked for. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not very impressive because Joely Rodriguez can't get fucking outs because he gave up the inherited runner on uh, opening day. Okay. So it's two innings in one run. But, but that Ks, has to do no with walks. he came out for the top of the next inning, right? Or the bottom of the next inning, right? Correct. Not Instead of giving the clean inning to Joely. Not get, which Joely needs, I can't stress it enough, all the help in the world. Not giving that guy a clean inning is insane. However... This has been a problem for years. Good bullpen, bad bullpen, Bailey, no Bailey. Stop giving guys non-clean innings. It drives me insane. If you know you have someone warming up, I, unless someone has like a perfect game going, then you want to push it until they get a hit, fine. I understand. Anything else, even no hitter, I don't give a fuck that much about. G give your bullpen a clean inning. It's so easy to lose games by trying to push a guy one extra batter. It's so fucking stupid. He walks five per nine. Like, that's as simple as the math should be. The guy's going to put someone on, so you're already making it, what, it's going to be two guys on, and then he has to work around it. I don't know if they were trying to find someone because they did the same thing with Weiser, sure. right? Uh, where they were, you know, can this guy go multiple innings? Can this guy go multiple innings? We saw Josh Winkowski go two and struck out four, got a little rocky in that second inning as it usually does. But I think what you saw from Justin Slayton today as well, who, you know, what, it was seven outs on 15 yeah, pitches, which is ridiculous. Crazy. But they may lean at him and look at him as the other multi-inning option at times or someone who can go beyond that one inning. Still, I don't like it. It seems like you're setting but even if you, But even if that's the case, you can't pull him just because the first guy gets on because that tells me your plan is not work. to be multi-inning. It's to like, maybe he gets a couple outs so we can steal. No, that can't be it. Give your bullpen clean innings. Jared? 
Get, turn. Uh, Coley, was the was the the tie that you wore today for Easter? Was that was that your wedding tie? May have been. Definitely may have been. Yeah. Yeah. Very strongly could have been. Yep. All right. Continue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. Yes. Just give the guys clean inning. That's all. I don't ask for much. I do not ask for much. Good take, Cold Dog. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> my first line in my journal from the series finale here against the Seattle Mariners, I'm already sick of the, quote, bullet slider. <laughs> what? What? Sick of it. <laughs> For what? Sick of it. It's just like, it, it, it's a fucking slider. And like, it has vertical drop. Like, it's a different kind of slider. But like, all the, the baseball nerds just trying to label every goddamn thing. Like, oh, it's a sweeper. It's not a slider. It's a bullet slider. It's a gyro slider. It's a slider. Like, you can tell me it's a slider that breaks vertically instead of horizontally. And like, I'll follow you. But like, how many fucking pitch names can we have now? I feel like it's just like, I get that, you know, people are understanding more about like spin rate and RPM and, and vertical movement and horizontal movement. Like not every, like if it breaks at a different degree, like now you're just going to name it something different. Like where does it end? I thought you were more complaining about the pitch. I will agree the name. Obviously he wasn't complaining about the pitch. I, I didn't know. I had to hear his point. Yeah. It's just like, I mean, Jesus Christ, like it's a slider. You just tell me that it breaks horizontally or vertically or whatever. Like, we don't have to have, like, 20 different variants of a slider. It's a slider. I'm, I'm old enough to remember when a vertical slider was just called a curveball. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, like, Craig Kimbrell, <laughs> oh like, his, Craig Kimbrell, his curveball breaks like a slider. And everyone's like, oh, man, he's got a nasty wipeout slider. He's like, actually, it's a curveball. Like, it's based on the grip. But, yeah, I'm, ar- I'm, I'm already sick of bullet slider. Jake? <laughs> Yeah, I could do without it. Yeah. <laughs> Boom sauce. Yeah, thank you. I hated uh, Rafaela not playing in this game. He's like 12 years old. He's yeah, got plenty of energy. That is. Fuck. Get him out there. I every will say game. My, next, my next note, uh, will you're fucking up a lot. <laughs> Arrow picked off <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Yep, that's not that's number two from this game. That's fair. It's a fair note, Tyler. Yep, Tyler. I believe it was Mitch Hanniger who had that. Uh, hold on, let me make sure oh, here. Boy. Uh, or was it Rojas that shot that ball? Yeah, it was Rojas who shot. Or no, no, it was Hanniger who shot the ball into the gap, right? And I think Sedan Rafaela <laughs> catches that ball. I do, right? You saw Jaron Duran going. What are you going to throw me out? Because I'm reading through my notes real quick. Come on, I'm, I got to throw a perfect game to speak. That's a warning. It's a warning. Go ahead. Fuck your warning. I Fuck all the warnings. Put me in the box. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> that was crazy. Oh, whoa. That's crazy. If, I, if, I'm, if I'm the umpire and I'm like, hey, that's a warning. That's a warning for you. Then you're just like, you know what, Blue? Fuck you. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. It's, it's like, like shit you're just asking play. to get... Yeah, you're, you're just asking to get thrown out of the game. Like, I, don't, I, I, I wasn't... I was ready to get back to the ball talk. I, I thought was, you guys had a good agreement there. It seemed like yeah, it was... Yeah, I was like, yeah. hey, that's, that's a warning. I'm not tossing you. Then you're like, fucking toss me, pussy. Like, obviously, I'm going to do that. I mean, you legitimately asked for it. So go ahead. On the Hanniger double into right center that he ended up coming around when Rojas hit him in. I think Sedan Rafaela catches that ball in center field. I think that's the difference between Jaron Duran being out there. And that's, I don't know, if you're talking about improved defense and stuff like that, I'd take Rafaela out there in center field as much as possible because you feel the difference. You realize how Tyler O'Neill making that play down the left field line today and kind of getting that ball. Yoshida would have let that fall into foul ground and the next pitch would have been a homer. That was a huge Those play. little things are what the team have lacked. That was also sneaky, huge play. I, 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 it was a huge play. The thing that stuck out to me between getting thrown out at second and not really being close to that pop fly was like, is has story speed not there? Like it really has, like he beat out that, that play in the infield, but that, to me, felt like the shortstop ball. The one Tyler O'Neill yeah. grabbed? Story was in the area, but Devers was closer, which felt incorrect to me. Devers shouldn't be closer well, to like, that ball. He was there, but he was like was, hugging the foul line, kind of. Yeah, it was, but it was pretty up against the wall. It was like, what, a couple, maybe a foot away from I'm not saying it's itself. crazy the left fielder got it by any stretch. Like, it's not what I'm trying to say. But to me, 
when Story first got here, it felt like his speed was one of his selling points. And like if if he had not got caught at second or if he had made that play, I wouldn't have even brought it up. It was both of them combined where I was just like, huh, it feels like even if he lost like just a tick, not a full like mile per hour or anything. But I, if I remember him being faster is more, I guess what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't think it's crazy. Like last year, you look at Story, I think he had 10 bags in 43 games. So like. 30 stolen bases and he wants to hit that mark again i'm not freaking out yet he still looks really athletic to me but yeah something to keep an eye on and i think that's what you worry about trevor story because we know the bat's never going to be well above average or anything like that so if he starts not being able to steal bags the defense takes a step back because of it it's like all right well this guy is legit not bringing anything to the table for anything. yeah and like the gloves still elite i have no problems there but and i don't know if this has to do with alignment or what but jp crawford Casas hit a couple balls on the nose, a couple other guys too. J.P. Crawford was just fucking standing there to the point where I thought he was doing an illegal shift. Like I was like, how is this motherfucker there every time? And then I think of most of the Mariners runs this series outside of extra innings. There were tricklers up the middle and Manuel Valdez like nowhere near it. And I never expect him to be near it because I know he's bad at defense. But also, Story's playing like deep third base to the point where I know that's not his call. So I'm wondering what it is with the Red Sox. And this is something I've harped on for years, much like the clean inning thing. I don't know who is having these guys so out of what feels like so out of alignment. Obviously, some balls are going to get through. That's baseball. But it seems to happen to them more often than any other team I watch. To your initial note, Jerry, Abreu, it only took a couple mistakes for it to really look like he does not belong on the team. I feel like there's a <laughs> difference and it's only literally been like two games for him. Some people in the mentions, be, "Oh, you got to give him it's time." A strong. Yeah, it's it's a little like strong. I I get that you got to give him some time, but there are certain well, he errors looked, he and mistakes good last year. I think he, Yeah, I, but well, I'm just so, there's certain mistakes where it's like you just can't make that at the big league level. So when you're stacking those up, it's pretty bad. I agree with you and we had this whole tangent whether it was last episode or the one before about how like I don't give a shit about spring training and spring training doesn't matter. Like Willier was one of the dudes that like straight up looked like ass <laughs> in spring training and it seems to be carrying over uh, at least offensively and now it's kind of like bleeding into his defense. He's getting picked off like stuff that you can't do. We didn't even get on uh, Jolie, by the way. Did Wasn't that on opening day where he fucking like yeah. punched a dude out and walked off the mound yeah. with two outs? Yeah. It's like, so you hard. can't so you can't do that when you're so bad. <laughs> like you can't just fucking stomp off the mound like Papelbon when you've got a 90 RA with the Red Sox and you're just re- you're just you're you're loading up the tank to blow the game in a couple of days. So yeah, it's like Willier. Uh, I'm not as down on him as as it sounds like Steve is, but I mean he noticeably stuck out as butt cheeks. In this series, Steve was uh, like, Tyler? Send, him, send him to Alcatraz. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. That I don't need him <laughs> gone. It's just like, I can't get over that like bobble. I can't get over that bobble on Saturday night. That just literally can't happen. T Dog, yeah, I agree. No, I agree. I, I think that's bad. And I think you get picked off at second base and then you almost got doubled off right before that as well. Yeah. Like you were really close to getting doubled off. Those are the little things. It's just, it feels like with Tyler O'Neill and whether you care about the team being at its best where it needs a right handed bat. Or at the same time, well, we want to flip Tyler O'Neill at the deadline. Is this the closest way to get that where you're going to have this infrequent playing time for Abreu? Because he doesn't feel like the kind of guy that would thrive without daily at bats because he's so played a pro's base. base. That's how he goes about it. It's working those counts. If he's not seeing regular at bats, he's going to get all over the place. So I don't know. It, It becomes complicated for me because it felt like there were already questions on opening day where everyone's like, well, why isn't Abreu out there? You said he was going to get a majority of the bats. Obviously, he's a lefty. It's a better platoon matchup, right? And Cora was like, well, no, you know, let's do the Tyler O'Neill thing on opening day. How long does it take when you see O'Neill continue to impact these games before you got to kind of switch it up and you say, hey, the truth is O'Neill's probably going to get hurt in May or June, whatever. He'll need an IL stint. Let's go get a Brayu then. You'll be having every day at bats. And if you come up here and you take the position, the conversation's done. It'll be yours to ride for the year. Because yeah. I want Rafaela and Duran playing as much as possible. I don't want those two guys to suffer because we need to get Abreu and O'Neill. I don't. I don't. Well, I don't know that Duran is an auto play yet. I think he's still no. in that. That's I've got that right here. Tyler O'Neill needs to play every day. I, O'Neill, I agree with, even if it's DH. Like to me, O'Neill and Rafaela need to play every day, even if that's at DH. 
What about his what about his defense though? Like his defense has noticeably made a difference in the outfield. It has, but it's to the point to Tyler's point, we know he's going to get hurt. So if I can at least have his bat in the lineup as like a pseudo fake off day, which I typically hate, but for him specifically, I just think him in the lineup anywhere is going to affect the game positively at this point. Mm -hmm. That's where it's like, all right, yeah, I love his defense in the field. I know that's just opens him up more to getting hurt. So it's like mm-hmm. those two I just want in the lineup. I don't really care. I don't want Raphael at second ever again. I only want him playing center where he can really affect the game. Um, mm-hmm. Duran, like if he just needs to do more, he needs to not like fuck up Casas at bats. Fuck up your own at bats is one <laughs> thing. If you're going to fuck up multiple people's at bats, now we've, I've got to like Brayu's only fucking up his own at bats. But I think that's where you look at Duran. You say, well, that was obviously a weird moment. He's already stolen two bags this year. And if we're talking about what the Red Sox are trying to do with athleticism and pushing those things, I think Duran is who it's based. And he's your leadoff hitter right now. He's the guy they want to pencil in that spot. And I think in left field, he has a chance to be a gold glove defender out there. I do believe that because the outfield jumps were 99th percentile last year. You put him in that left field corner where there's not as much to worry about. The arm doesn't friggin' matter. We're not asking you to play right field. If you ever even consider putting Duran in right field, you're out of your mind because the arm not can't at all. handle it. Not at all. That is one of the craziest things. No, exactly. But I think with Duran, that element of athleticism and you know what he did for you last year over 102 games, when we saw the best version of the Red Sox, he was often at the you know center of it. Now, if he struggles for three months and it's like, oh, all right, well, you know, he's back to 2022. Cool. Then you have the conversation with Abreu and what you want to do. But I think he's earned a leash that Abreu. He has. definitely has a leash, no doubt. But to me, it's like when I look at auto plays right now, it's Rafael and it's O'Neill. Like I'm saying, if, if you want to DH Duran, you know what I'm saying? If you want to put O'Neill and left, I have no problem with this bat being out there. I can't have those other two guys sitting. I think that's fair. And I think you also have to get to the point here with Roman Anthony. Someone's going to have to get moved probably at the deadline. Maybe two outfielders to kind of make this whole picture work or whatever it may be. You got to figure out which one of the young guys are going to be here long term. That is a big part of the conversation. And I think especially with Duran, if you think he's going to be, you know, a league average bat and there's not much ceiling, you got to figure that out right now instead of kind of playing this game where you have question marks. Well, it's also like if Duran has a league average bat with clearly above league average speed, that to me is more than if a bright you has just a league average bat. Yeah, like when Duran's on, you know he's on. That that's the that's the difference. Because even looking up their stats, Duran had two hits, but he was on four times, and you knew every time he was on. It's like, oh, okay, this is a much different situation. I mean, it is kind of surprising. The Sox should be three and one, and Duran's story and Casas went six for forty nine right. in that series. They hit one twenty two. So with no extra base hits, those are six singles. Uh, one of them should have been a ground out by Trevor Story. So. Yeah, the Duran thing is very interesting, and that's actually probably one of the top things I'm watching out of the gate here because you guys make good points with who needs to be in the lineup. But like you mentioned, Tyler, with with Abreu needing every day at bats, which kind of sucks because you don't want him to get every day at bats. I think Duran needs to be a guy in the lineup frequently too, or else he's gonna, you know, get cold. I don't know if that's good for him. But I think that's the difference here. It's like with Abreu, it's like all right, well, we saw a couple weeks. You can go back to AAA, get your feet underneath you. You had a rough camp. Let's let Duran do it. And in a month, if it's a different conversation, then we'll have the conversation. Sure. But, you know, I think Duran's earned that playing time more than Abreu has. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have any yeah. problem with that. It's more than fair. Uh, <clears throat> Garrett Whitlock continues the trend of excellent starting pitching by the Boston Red Sox in this series against the Mariners. Five innings, 81 pitches, which is right in that same... Uh, everyone else threw 84. Whitlock went 81 pitches in his five innings of work. Three hits, one earned run, did not walk a batter, punched out eight. Uh, next line in here says, I love Andrew Bailey. Um, what did you notice, Tyler, if anything at all, uh, that was different about Garrett Whitlock in this outing compared to years prior besides the bullet sliner? Ah, uh, well, with the bullet slider, if you're looking to baseball savant and trying to get a feel for it, you're not going to see anything because it categorized the cutter as depending on the location. He kind of spoke after the game. Baseball savant will fix this by tomorrow. Um, it just tends to happen day of game. But last year with Garrett Whitlock, he was leaning on his sinker a ton. Fifty two percent of the time he had lost the feel for the changeup, battling it all year, different velocity bands. He just couldn't get back to it today. 
We saw him completely lean into that changeup. It was the pitch he threw most at 31%, and the velocity was up almost two full miles per hour. So now he is throwing it harder again. I think that's a big difference. And then you're talking that cutter and that gyro slider along with the sweeper. He just looked like a guy who had more weapons early in the game when he was scuffling and he was trying to find a way. He was missing bats. To see Garrett Whitlock strike out eight guys, he's never done that in a start before. He did that in his first start of 2024. That's a big deal to me. That's a Garrett Whitlock we haven't seen. The only thing I would say is, I don't know if he waited until the Red Sox got the lead off after the Valdez homer when he started attacking hitters like that, those last two innings. Give me more of that, Whitlock. Don't be scared to attack guys because you don't want to give up a homer or something like that. That's bullpen Whitlock who can get you through an inning in seven or eight pitches because he wasn't very efficient early on. He bailed himself out at that point. Give me a little bit more of that. Give me that confidence. You don't need a lead to pitch like that. But that might also might have been him saying, hey, I got through the lineup, you know, basically once at this point. Let me go with a different approach here so they're not jumping me. Yeah, it felt like he was almost pitching backwards. Like he was he was going yeah. heavy late and he was trying to be all over the place, mixing shit up early, which I don't hate. I mean, it's a guy we've seen over the years look really good at points and then kind of break down after three, four really good starts. So if this is the plan, if it's going to keep changing every start, I trust Bailey. Yeah, I, I think my early overreaction is kind of being too much of a, a simpleton with Andrew Bailey and just being like, oh, OK, yeah, he's just going to fix everybody with the talent they have. I think I'm just straight up wrong with that, honestly. Like there's there's a chance Andrew Bailey might have already saved the Red Sox rotation. <laughs> like, I believe that's possible. So I think I'm just putting my hand up. I think I was wrong about Andrew Bailey. I, I never doubted his abilities, but. If this is seeing the stats already and seeing what stats put out there, I know you can't see that, Milliken. Um, hmm. It is nice to notice, oh, there's actual changes happening. Like there's actual actions taking place that are going to result in better outcomes for these starters. But then again, I also go back and think this is now the correct time to give him his credit. Before, we were rightfully all upset that this was the rotation they had. Like the offseason was the correct time to be like, what the hell? We're actually not adding anyone other than Giolito. Now it's like, okay, Bailey, you got the ingredients. They're maybe not great. How great can you make them look? I'm already impressed out of the gate. T Dog? I would also throw in, you know, as much credit as we're going to give, and let's see what Tanner Houck looks like tomorrow before we. If he gets rocked by the A's, that would be be tough. It wouldn't be like, let's see, after three innings, I still have not seen Tanner Houck look different than he needs to. You know, look like a guy who can go through a lineup multiple times. Um, but, oh, what was the point I was going to make on Whitlock? We'll find out. I just completely forgot. You were going to say look looked good. Um, but yeah, I, I think with Tanner Houck and everything like that, like the Red Sox entered this year with Lucas Giolito, so they were confident in, okay, putting one of those guys into the rotation. That was something they were factoring in. They The plan, no matter how they want to frame it, one of Whitlock or Houck was going to be out there. I think Houck would have made the rotation on opening day no matter what. Look at the way they're slotted and look at the way he kind of got stronger as camp went on. Houck started strong, but got weaker as everything kind of played out. So I don't know. I'm still walking on very thin ice with Tanner Houck. But if this, if Bailey even gets him to the point where he's looking, you know, as good as Whitlock or Cutter or any of these guys did, everyone's going to have to bow down. And I think that's where you get to the point of this guy, you know, so much success so early here in Boston with Alice Core potentially on the way out. I don't know how anyone doesn't look at him as the next manager of the Red Sox at that point. I do love JP on Twitter at Sox Notes. And I love the the stat he had of this only being the fourth time in Red Sox history that the first four starters have gone five plus and given up two or less. And the other times were 2018, 1999, and obviously 1916. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that team is sick. Hell that I mean, World champs. World champs. Yeah. yeah I, I, that's all you got to say. Back to back. They won in 1915. And but it. it's just nice to see that it's like, oh, okay, yeah, this doesn't, like, we're correct in thinking this doesn't normally happen. Love the 16 Sox. Yeah, 16 Sox. Who could forget that squad? Um, mm-hmm. you know him, you love him. Uh, that team, and you know, obviously, what I was gonna say mm-hmm. is that they had Talk Dutch Leonard, Thomas. Mm-hmm. Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth was the the ace of that staff. But I think this was before he killed his wife. Um, yep. he was twenty three and twelve through three hundred and twenty three and two thirds innings with a one seven five ERA. <laughs> Uh, had let's see how many strikeouts 
A hundred and he sucked, dude. <laughs> 170 strikeouts in 323 and two thirds innings. What is that? That's a 4.7 strikeouts per nine. He oh. sucks. What? He didn't give up a single homer. 243 fit. He was the only That's person hitting no one... homers then. Yeah. You get some credit for the that. The league is that such like, something. Like, this shit is so stupid. Uh, yeah. Dutch Leonard had a 236. Carl Mays had a 239. Ernie Shore rocking the 263, and then their number five starter, Rube Foster, with a 306 ERA. They all, everyone except for Rube Foster, threw at least 225 and two thirds innings. <laughs> Babe Ruth threw 323 and two thirds. Dutch Leonard threw 274 innings. Carl Mays threw 245 innings. Ernie Shore threw 225 and two thirds, and then. The slap dick Rube Foster only threw 182 in a third innings. As a staff that year, they gave up 10 home runs. <laughs> mm. That's including their bullpen. Which had they, sad Sam none Jones. Of, yeah, none of their relievers, none of their relievers gave up a home run. Uh you had Veen Greg. Yeah, you did. Veen Greg threw 77 in two thirds innings, did not allow a home run. Sad Sam Jones. <laughs> Sad Sam Jones threw 27 innings, did not allow a home run. Uh, Herb. Big Herb. Pennock. Mm. He went 26 and two thirds, did not allow a home run. And then Weldon Wickoff. He went 22 and two thirds innings, did not allow, allow a home run. Um, wow. What a squad to have. Mm. A, to have. I mean, Dutch Leonard, they must have like tortured this dude. He gave up six home runs. They must have been like, dude, you suck. Like, like we have not evolved as a species enough to hit, to allow six home runs. Like these people can't hit home runs, and you're out here giving up six. That's double the amount of the next closest on the staff. Carl Mays gave up three. Damn, Dutch Leonard, brutal. But these strikeouts per nine, Jesus Christ. Babe Ruth tied with Dutch Leonard. They both had four point seven strikeouts per nine. Yes, T Dog. I just don't feel like people talk enough about Dutch Leonard's uh, 1914 season where he had a 0.96 ERA and a 195 FIP that led both leagues. Wow. And how many innings? Fucking 280? 224.2. <laughs> That's just not right. Like, when anyone talks about like Babe Ruth, it's like he didn't play real baseball. He just did. Like, these are, these, this just no. Cool. Cool. I saw an upsetting, <clears throat> I saw an upsetting Babe Ruth stat this morning. Please share. Since oh yeah, something to do with Mookie. Since RBI became that. official, two MLB players have had a four-game span with nine hits, nine RBI, six walks, four home runs, and a 600 batting average. Babe Ruth, 1932. Marcus Lynn Betts this week. It's tough. Could have sworn Pablo Reyes did. That. He thought about he it. missed it by one RBI. He thought about it. Hmm. Well, good to know. Great to know. Good to know. Um, I I I uh, I wrote down uh, Justin Slayton is a guy and start it. Yeah, I think he's a guy. Mm -hmm. I think he's a guy. Red Sox win five to one. That's a series. Shout out to uh, Benny's Banana Splits mm -hmm. for sponsoring that. Um, how long have we been recording for, Jake? Uh, we're coming up on two hours here. Ah. <laughs> Do they have any deals I, at Benny's? Any any uh, promo code or anything? <laughs> yep, half off. Ah. Half <laughs> half off. Just half off. That's <laughs> anything? I mean, they only got splits. Is there a code? <laughs> they <got> split. <laughs> they just, just half off. They they charge you full price and then they split it. <laughs> That's good. Only at only at Benny's. Got to point to the camera. That was in the that was in the email. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Only at Benny's. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I told I promised Steve that these shows would be an hour and a half. <laughs> this wasn't terrible. Like this wasn't that bad. It's two hours. Well, it's not that bad. Uh, yeah, well, we're not done. The Stop and Shop look ahead! <laughs> Brought to you by Stop and Shop. 
Head on down to Stop and Shop where you can buy 10 pounds of tangerines. <laughs> Is it 10 They've pounds or 5 pounds? the offer. It's a recession. <laughs> you need your reens. You got to get them. <laughs> Use the promo ca- code SECTION10 at checkout and you will get 10 cents off of each tangerine when you buy at least five pounds of tangerines Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. only at stop and shop (laughs) they didn't ask for a point that's just you no no point point. (laughs) that's just you they just said don't they said don't point they said specifically don't point only at stop Mm -hmm. and shop Mm -hmm. thumbs up it's a three game series against the Oakland A's uh, who won a baseball game today on a walk off walk uh Steve, uh, you stop clapping there. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead, J Duck. It's Tanner Houck versus Joe Boyle. You know him. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely know him. I'm going to feel so- like such an asshole if we lose any of these goddamn games. <laughs> <laughs> you know him. Joey B, Joe Boyle. Getting the ball against Tanner Houck in the series opener. That's a 940 start. Uh, Brian Bayo versus Alex Wood, friend of the program. That's a 940 start on Tuesday. And then Nick Pavetta versus Ross Stripling oh. at 337. I hate that start time. I hate that start time. I hate Ross Stripling. Hate it. Hate it. Hate, 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 hate. Um, Tanner Houck, spring training. All right, whatever. There's spring training numbers, but 16 strikeouts, three walks, and 15 innings. We like to see that. Um, we would say that the key to Houck's success may or may not be in limiting walks this year. Um, he uses four seamer, a career low, 10% last year. Will be interesting to see if that disappears completely, given that hitters had a 325 batting average and a 550 slug against it last year. And also, Andrew Bailey just like apparently doesn't like throwing fastballs. Uh, Joe Boyle. Never heard of him before. The number 10 of the A's prospect ranking rankings. He's six foot seven, 240 pounds. Um, he was very good in his three starts in the end of the 2023 season. Uh, massive person. So he averages 98 miles per hour on his fastball of his 15 strikeouts and in 16 innings last year. Seven were on the fastball, seven on the slider and one on the cutter. Brian Bayo. Big notes from his first start with the four seamer and the cutter were MIA. Also, it is the only start that he averaged 96.1 miles per hour with the sinker. He only topped that once in 2023. He did allow nine fly balls. He only allowed nine plus fly balls in uh, eight starts um, 28 times last year. Uh, Another night game. So hopefully this is the start of uh, getting away from the day game woes. As you know, last year in day game, 6.94 ERA compared to 3.06 at night. Uh, had eight swinging strikes, but only two strikeouts on opening day. Alex Wood facing the Guardians on opening day. He got lit up, unfortunately. We do like him. Three and a third, seven hits, six earned. Uh, allowed 14 balls in play. Seven of those were hit hard, a.k.a. 95 five plus miles per hour. Four of them were over 100 miles an hour. Um, he doesn't allow many home runs, 0.9 per nine for his career, and has never allowed more than 17 in a full season. He had a 4.33 ERA and 97 in two thirds innings last year with 12 starts and 17 relief appearances. Uh, Nick Pavetta. Not much you can do when your offense does absolutely nothing for you. He allowed five hard hits in his debut. Four of them were outs. Uh, then one, which was the difference in the game. That was the J.P. Crawford home run. Um, his sweeper, which was introduced last year, was his number one pitch. Thir- 33.3% usage. Um, only threw it 5.4% of the time last year, but it produced a 114 batting average, 118 slug, 44% whiff rate. Uh, the Mariners were one for 11 with a single and seven strikeouts, 42% whiff on the Pavetta sweeper. Ross Stripling, like Alex Wood, um, we were all surprised to see that he's still in Major League Baseball. Uh, three innings, seven hits, five runs, four of them earned, two walks, took an L in his debut. 
Fastball is down to 90.9 miles per hour, and it is his third pitch behind his slider and his changeup. Fastball is down 1.6 miles per hour from last year. Uh, got a little bit unlucky in his debut. Five of 16 batted balls were hard hit, but the damaging home run and double had an expected batting of 160 and 140, respectively. Uh, only got nine whiffs on 43 swings against the Guardians. In 2023, he had a 536 ERA and allowed 20 home runs and 89 innings across 11 starts and 11 rep- uh, relief appearances for the Giants. I feel like it's only appropriate if uh, we kick it to Jake for the uh, prediction here against the Oakland A's. Yeah, all due respect to Joe Boyle, but I got a quick sweep here. <laughs> yeah, it's like just quick, painless, just in and out. It's a business trip. Um, Steve, what do you got in the series? I have the Red Sox winning two out of three. They've only swept Oakland in in Oakland. I think once in the last like six or seven years. It's a, it's a good take. Tyler? I'm going sweep. Nick Pavetta against the A's is usually a cheat code. 0.82 ERA against them in 33 innings. Brian Bayo doesn't have to pitch during the day, which he got rocked at against Oakland last year. Mm-hmm. So at night, give me that. Tanner Houck, we'll kind of see how it plays out. I'm not going to say I'm super confident, but if there's a lineup he can get through and handle, it probably is this one. Tristan Casas hasn't heated up yet. Devers is smacking baseballs and needs to be rewarded. I think this could be a series where the offense carries. And maybe the pitching is just meh, but let the offense cook. Call it. I fucking hate Ross Stripling. He's, when he was with the Blue Jays, it just felt like he would pitch well against us. I do not know nor care if the numbers back that up. That's how it felt. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) Yep. And it bothers me because I don't think he's particularly good. Like when a good pitcher pitches well against us, fine. Ross Stripling doing it, I take that personally. Uh, so I'm going to take two out of three. Jerry, if people were to go to Underdog and enter promo code Carabas, what is a matchup specifically? Obviously, we don't have projections sitting in front of us, but is there a player mm-hmm. or players you think would do well this series that you would encourage the people to go check out? Ooh, that's a, that's a great question, Cole. I'm glad that you mm-hmm. asked. Um, I would love to see on uh wednesday i would love to see trevor story get uh uh hit hit a homer on wednesday against ross stripling who has a little bit of a knack for giving up the long ball i would also like to see an individual by the name of we we don't know he's going to be in the lineup but if he is in the lineup sadan rafaela to hit his first home run of the major league season yes on wednesday in the pavetta stripling and then i mean if there's a there's a way to kind of say that Nick Pavetta is going to have more strikeouts than maybe the odds makers think he might. And I, I, I also feel comfortable going there too. I don't hate that. Yeah. And that's where Smooch has had his record relief K thing, right? No Correct. Problem. Yep. Yeah. Sure was. Sure was. Uh, I'm going to go two out of three. Um, I don't know. I just feel like because we made fun of Joe Boyle that he's going to shove it up our ass. <laughs> so I, I feel like he, he obviously listens and oh. he's going to be like, oh, all right. Never heard of Joey B. Okay. So I got, I got the Red Sox <laughs> dropping the, the series opener and then taking the next two. I searched Joe Boyle. The first picture that comes up, he's holding the ball in a glove like he's never seen either <laughs> in his life. Like I don't, nah, you know what? I don't, I'm not convinced you know he knows he's on the A's. Like, does he Jake, know he's getting Jake, the ball? change it. I guess we... This <laughs> guy's never played baseball. And it's a tough pick. Time. It's a tough pick. It's the first picture that Every comes up. Starts. <laughs> it's a tough yeah. pick. Joe Boyle, <laughs> like I've met 7,000 Joe Boyles. They're all from Southie. They're mm-hmm. all, I mean, they're strong, tough guys. There's no denying that. I, I've never seen them yeah. play baseball, so it's hard for me to project. I agree. Yeah, I'm, I changed it to sweep. No. Uh, programming notice. Next week, the Red Sox are off on Monday, so we're going to record on Monday instead of Sunday night because I'm not missing WrestleMania. Sorry. Hmm. Because it's, it's like, a, I think Sunday's game is at like four o'clock again. So if we watch the game and then record right after, I'm missing WrestleMania. Can't do it. And I know Steve, Steve already said, he was like, I'm not fucking missing WrestleMania. Right, right. Yeah, Steve? I'm not missing that. I also have a weather look ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, please. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Billy's, <laughs> Billy's Gummy Bears weather look ahead is brought to you by Billy's Gummy Bears. Wow. That, chew them with your mouth. 
chew them with your mouth. <laughs> First game, like Jerry mentioned, is at 940 Eastern, 640 Pacific. Some weird mm-hmm. start times out west that I really don't care for at all. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be 46 degrees, 9% Ooh, chance of rain. Yeah, chilly one. Yikes. Winds light and variable, Jared. Light. Ooh. Would you and... recommend like a winter hat at that point? Because the no. wind too? or I wouldn't say a winter hat per se. I would just would say, say maybe a couple, a couple light layers. A couple light layers light, maybe. Light, 46 with a wind? Couple, Are you shitting a, me? A couple light layers can add up to like You ever stand outside layer. in 46 with a chance of gosh. rain being like, oh, a fucking turtleneck will gosh, do. Gosh, never felt 46, it sounds like. No, dude. No, I 46. Run, I run hot though. I run. No, I run that, you don't. 46, not, 46 with wind. Could, at, like for your. Yeah, right, yeah, that's yeah, fair. yeah, yeah, yeah. 46 wear a, with wind wear could a feel warm like coat. 31. You can, you can yeah. wear a winter coat, but 46, if you're near 50, a winter coat seems pushing a little bit. No? I, I don't know. I mean, I guess. Spring jacket. Yeah, whatever. T Dog, you run hot? Extremely. I'm sweating right now. I can do that. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I got the meat sweats. Uh, Tuesday, game two is also at 640 Pacific, 940 Eastern, 74% chance of rain. Oh, oh, I thought, (laughs) I thought you were going to say 74 degrees. That's on me. That's on me. I'll take a He does typically. Oh, 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 wow. What? Wait, that's how long. Oh, I thought the yeah, music stopped. suspension. <laughs> I thought his suspensions are five seconds. Like, what is this? Well, it's also... I, this is accountability. I do feel like, I like you this. typically lead with temperature. You kind of set him up there. I did. I'll actually... Yeah, it's true. I'll actually take... I'll take a suspension, too, if you got one. Doesn't 74% chance of rain? I saw this on Twitter mean it will rain in 74% of the area. I just it's don't like getting into that. I just, Tyler, you're not wrong. I just don't like getting yeah, into it because it bugs me. Yeah. You're the weather guy. Yeah. I'll take a step back. I'll yeah. take one, Jerry, if you got one. Because no, I, I threw you. All right. No, that's fine. It's that's sort fine. of a double set. Right. Like, it's double jeopardy right there. One of you had to go down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah, fair. One of you had to go down. <laughs> you are right. The temperature comes first 44 degrees, 74% yeah, you chance fucked of rain. That's what I'm saying. I did. Yeah. I was. I was yeah, willing yeah. to get suspended. No, that's fine. All right. Uh, steady light rain in the evening. Showers continuing late. And like you would guess, Jared, winds from the south to southwest at Ooh. 10 to 15 miles an hour. <laughs> that's that's gusty. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday series finale. That is Eastern time at 1237. It is. Nope. That's also known as Pacific. But yeah, I, I gotta get suspended for that. that yeah, what the fuck? You can't. You can't get the time wrong for the fucking. To game, be fair, dude. he's not the time guy. Like, he's the weather guy. I understand that, but like, if if I'm preparing my outfit for the game based on Steve's weather report, if he tells me it's during the day, then it's like, oh, maybe I'll throw some sunglasses. Oh, if it's okay. a night game, I don't need sunglasses. Okay. Like the time is important for the fit. You for know sure. what I mean? Like people are people aren't listening to this like weather report for any other reason than how to dress for the game. Well, time is important. And also, I mean, it sounds like it's gonna be pouring uh, Tuesday. It <laughs> might be a, a double header Wednesday. We're gonna play baseball? Might be a double header Wednesday. Yeah, that'd be great. Wednesday, it's 3.37 Eastern, 12.37 Pacific. My apologies. 51 degrees, 24% chance of rain. Uh, Winds from the southwest at 5 to 10 miles an hour. And as the game goes on, it will get a little cooler, getting down to about 45 degrees. So that'll do it for the weather look ahead. Okay. All right. Um, we, We don't have any other segments left, right? Uh, no, I had MLB history watch. Down the DM, bitch! It goes down in the DM. Do we even have DM? No, it goes down in the check. DM. Go down the Steve's it. new segment he just tried to introduce. <laughs> yeah, what did you just try to do? <laughs> and history watch. And history watch. No. No. <laughs> DM. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, oh. You guys ever hear about the 1971 <laughs> Red Sox? That was terrible. That can't happen. Come on. Off season, fine. Yeah, sure. No, I think he's talking okay. about players who are pr- approaching history. Is that is that what I get? Oh, no, I was saying. Uh, yeah. 
I'll say it if you don't. You probably don't want me to say it, right? No, no. Nope. Right. I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> Thank you nope. for trying. <laughs> I mean that genuinely. You get. You can not. listen. Listen. <laughs> I mean. We're out of time crunch right now. I mean, God forbid the Red Sox fucking won this well, series. We would have had haikus. We would have had ketchup. Yeah. Like, this has been three fucking hours. Well, we had I'm the one that wants shorter episodes, and now I'm introducing <laughs> this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to type 40, all 40 are my bits. Can we go? <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, that's not great. Yeah. Not great. Yeah. Oh yeah, pay for the effort. I mean, I like. It was the only thing I had left in my notes. That was I, yeah. I'm intrigued. Yeah. You you asked. I'm definitely intrigued. Yeah. I won't deny that. It was just very funny to be like, we're on a time crunch. Let me tell you about the '84 Dodgers. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> also, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> this was also a four game series, so we had an extra game to break down. Like maybe maybe try to sneak it in after the ace sweep. All right, perfect. Yeah. All right, so tune in next week for fucking Steve's history lesson. Steve's history uh, watch. Steve's history watch. Uh, down on the DMs featuring Steve. Uh, the weather <laughs> report featuring Steve. And uh, I gave up empty in the bench. This was my version. And empty in the bench with Steve. No, I don't. I don't have. I don't have that anymore. I want you to do it. Tyler should do it next week. Right. Yeah, next week Tyler will be doing. Uh, the Steve Memorial emptying the bench segment. I'll be ready. Okay. I'll have diverse topics. Okay. Appreciate that. Uh, Jake Stakes? Uh, we've unfortunately put ourselves in a tight spot where tonight's game is basically game seven in the World Series because <laughs> if Joe Boyle shoves it up our ass, we <laughs> might have to cancel the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. Maybe we can have Dallas call in. Uh, next episode to break down the series yeah yeah true of, of uh, the baseball is dead podcast <clears throat> all right does anyone have any final thoughts oh, i feel like i don't dude, were there any dms everybody. i thought Tyler? that was a joke you, you want dms i can give you some he played the music do you have one just give me one just give me one yeah i did play the music yeah it's true we kind of always have to yeah uh <laughs> let's see <laughs> See if there's any in there about history. <laughs> that would be a good two for one deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, man. Well, there's a specific type of DM that I always have to start with. You know what I mean? You don't have to. You sure? That was a test. A DM, Steve. Uh, this comes in from Garin. No, with G A R I N. Like a guy, though. Didn't you just say I don't I don't have to? Yeah, I didn't mean that. <laughs> okay, this comes in from Kelly. Hey, Kelly, you make this out? Are you making this out? No, All right, it's All from right. Kelly. No, right, hey Kelly. LFG boys, welcome back. Where can I get merch? Thanks in advance and congrats. Wow, thanks Ke thanks for the question Kelly. We really appreciate it. Loyal listener to that, Kelly. Uh, it's coming soon. It's coming soon. Right, Coley? I, you're the one dealing with it. Yeah, I mean, like, we've we've made significant strides. Big strides. Like, the, the, design, the designs are designed. They've been designed since before Super the season. Uh, we're working on the store. I think we have, like, our own URL. Probably. Like, I'm not going to tell you what it is because I don't want you to go, like, look at it before it's mm -hmm. done. But, like, we're it's not going to be like oh like you go to this link and then you click on that and then you drop down and then you click then you click on section 10. like basically like what the bullshit that we've had to deal with like uh with like bar stools like oh you fucking go here you click on baseball you go to the store and then you do this and then you, you know scroll for turn out towers and then you find our stuff like no we'll have like our own site so it'll be easy for you to find um so yeah it's it's i, I would say no more than another week i would say for merch Cool. Those are uh, the DMs spread to bear Ronald's napkins. They clean wow. your fucking face. Shout out to Ronald's. God damn, man. They just hang mm -hmm. in. Um, anyone else have any final thoughts? Tyler? Of course you do. <laughs> Go ahead. There was no need for the second <laughs> comment. <laughs> Joe Jakes gave up six earned runs and didn't record an out in the first game of the season for the Woo Sox. Mm. So his ERA's infinity. No way. I've done. <laughs>
<laughs> Joe Jakes. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll be back on Wednesday night. Back on Wednesday night uh, for more of the 10. Hopefully talking about a sweep of the Oakland A's. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Buenas noches, amigos.